Yes. <laughs> Bro, the first thing that happens when you become a billionaire is everyone realizes you're, you're a billionaire, billionaire number one. and the price goes up on everything. everything. And number two, billionaires now come and say, welcome to the billionaires club. You have to fight to keep those billions. Yeah, bro. Your circle changes. You think you're of hanging course. out with people in the church? People that will go to dinner <laughs> yeah. and say, ah, should be it. aren't you paying? You don't want to hang around those goodness. motherfuckers. Yo, have you seen, the, um, it's on the lost tapes of the of season three of the Chappelle show. When, um, oh, yeah, when they say when he goes, get, they get, announce get. how much money he makes, <laughs> he took haircuts now ten thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, the funny the same thing was happening to Hush Puppy as well, you know. Is it Hush Puppy said the amount that he pays his driver, his, he pays his uh, yeah. his uh, the person who cuts his hair and everything. Yeah. But when it's you're all stealing money, it's money. different, though, isn't it? Of course, bro. Yeah, of course. who gives a fuck about Hush Puppy? They should have charged him even more. <laughs> yeah. What's it called? <laughs> but here's the thing Russell Westbrook, who's a basketball player. Yeah. He, during the, the finals last year, they had a bubble in it because okay. of the, the COVID. And so they had to stay in a hotel, you know, yeah. with st- strict rules. Yeah. And he left a $7,000 tip for the hotel staff who would clean the room every day and do everything like that. He left a $7,000 tip. Although, Golly. when you put it into context, he's on, what, 30 million a year? <laughs> yeah, but 7K tip is still a that's 7K not, that's tip. That's 100 pounds, man, to him. Do you, have you ever left a hundred pound tip for the for the cleanup? No, stuff? because I'm not in a hundred pound bracket like that. <laughs> like if I drop twenty on them on them, I, I feel like I've. Have you on ever them. left any tip for the cleanup for, stuff? For travel lodge, for housekeeping, for travel lodge, for any house, for travel any, lodge. any hotel you no, stayed in. No, no, but even when you stayed in the ones in Dubai, in Dubai hell no. Yes, what I'm saying. Yeah, because I can't afford it. You can't afford it. No, I can't. You the amount you're making per night because obviously I'm not going to say it on the, the pod. End. I know this. Yeah, so how would I? Why would I cut into money I haven't got yet? It's uh, a bro, poor you know man's you are, mentality. I if I was earning poor. 30 million a year, I would drop 7,000 myself. When I left Lagos this last time I went, I settled everybody, including the guy who trained me. That's because me if you the didn't, gym. they won't let you lock, leave. They will. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was, hey, I, was, I, was look, in Nigeria, I was looking for people specifically in the hotel to go and bless them. You know, that's different. I would service. do that. I, I, here's you the would. Thing. Of course, I've done that. In Nigeria, I've done that. In Nigeria, when I was leaving. Um, I had pounds on me. Yeah. And I had five pounds on me. And yeah. I knew if I go to if I go to London, listen, if I go to London, this was like fifteen years ago. Yeah. If I go to and London. That five pounds was website. Bro, fifteen, 15 years, years ago. ago. Yeah, today yeah. he'd have rushed me. <laughs> and rightly so. We, we, it was kind of see how money is this time. But then five pounds was a lot. Yeah, yeah. And and bear in mind, doesn't matter who five pounds to the person I gave it to yeah. was the guy in the toilet. Of course. Wow. The guy in the toilet in the airport. Okay. By the way, he didn't give me any lollipop. He didn't give me um, any <laughs> cologne. He didn't give me any lolly. He didn't give me any cologne. He just was there and he gave me a little, t- yeah. uh, little tissue. But I knew I was going to waste his five pounds on chicken and chips when I came to London. Oh, my I gave God. it to the homeboy. He didn't even look at it. He just said, thank you, sir. And then he looked at it and then started praying for me. Yeah, they, they don't look at, you don't look at it straight away. No. It looks ungrateful when yeah, you, yeah, yeah. If you look at it straight away. You're like, thank you, sir. Then he looked and said, oh, God bless you, sir. Yeah, yeah, Part yeah. of me was was even like, I just gave him five quid. Yeah. But here's the thing. I wouldn't give a beggar in England five quid. In England, the rates go down dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> it's you according to the footsie, yeah, yeah. bro. That's how you get paid in the country, <laughs> according to the exchange rate. <laughs> no, I'm hella generous in Nigeria, and if, to the point where my mum is often cutting how much I tip people. Like, well, this is the thing, though. If you give them too much, but that's it's the be a problem, problem with Nigerians, though. That's the problem. This is the problem with Nigerians. This is the problem with Nigerians. We don't understand. Yeah, we imagine all our parents do that. We try and show some good to these people. No, 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 they'll take, they'll take advantage of you. Meanwhile, we live in a country where they take advantage of you every single day. 100%. And bro. you don't complain. 100%. I, there was one particular really good experience I had in Nigeria, and I just felt to bless them. It was really one guy I wanted to bless, but it was kind of working as a team, so I kind of had to bless both of them the same. But this guy was just so knowledgeable. He was so humble. He was a recent graduate. He'd studied like phonetics and all kinds of things. Like He was well-read. And it was at, um, uh, it was in Abelkuta, uh, Ulumo Rock. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been? Ulumo Rock. It's basically like a, it's this, it's basically like a small hill mountain kind of thing. I haven't been to Ulumo Rock, but I know of it. Okay. So they've kind of made it into like a tourist complex. Of course. Um, but the idea is that, you know, they show you where traditionally Yoruba, uh, People religion, um, you know, in terms of like the religion, like where the sacrifices are done here, they sacrifice chickens every year. There's there's a song. You went there. I mean, it's all on a mountain, bro. Did you scream, I am covered by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> My mom was already doing all of that. <laughs> They have a Shank museum the where they do 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 show you all the little gods and okay. idols and stuff. Is I was free? looking at a. F- no, no, you paid to enter. No, that's good. But- because yeah. England will show you um, Satan's bedroom if they, if you could if you could market it. <laughs> she, that's no, but the, the, the amazing thing was that 
he made us feel super welcome. Of course. So, what so he, he knew d- it was a tourist thing, right? He, exactly. So what he did was he, he understood the the assignment in terms of these guys are Nigerians who've been raised abroad. So he's like, I want, I want you to know you're welcome home. This is your home too. So I'm going to teach you aspects of the culture and the religion and everything else up there for educational purposes. But I'm also going to teach you some Yoruba as well. So he does this whole thing about, you know, the seven When you minutes. say some Yoruba, you, you, mean, you mean that Yoruba, that, that, that secret scrolls, scrolls type Yoruba. I'm talking about the seven seven <laughs> meanings of Ogun. So he's like, okay. there's um, Ogun, that's yeah. like sweat. Okay. Then it's like Ogun, that's it's long. Then it's, it's like Ogun, Ogun that's the climate. Then basically he's got like seven different intonations in which how you can say the word Ogun. Yeah. And all their different meanings. Just like a little fun facts thing. Okay. And you use that to now, um, you know, show us uh, the view. We climb okay. to the top. And you now, he now says one, you know, and that's how Did you, you always... Did you live in a or something? No, we went for we went for like a couple of days away okay. from Lagos. Okay, a home in Abuja. No, so my mom knows the uh, the owner of the park in in Abuja. Okay, so you stayed there. So we stayed there. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice, a nice. Because I don't know hotel. why you would go to Abuja. Bro, it's, sometimes it's good to get out of Lagos because oh, all I've never been to is I've, Lagos. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, you know what? You're right. Yeah. Because you're right. You're right. You're hundred percent right. Yeah. But there is no culture of visiting anywhere. In Nigeria. My mom's... I've gone to my mom's village. I've been there a couple of which times is, as a kid. Uh, Uderema, which Jeb- is in Ogun State. Ogun State, okay. So yeah, so Abelkuta is capital of Ogun yes, State. You're, so you're Ogun State. So, yeah, my mom's from there. So, I think taking us to Abelkuta was Akute, a Ogun State close, is close to Lagos, isn't it? Yes, Akute, Akute is where we stayed during my sister's wedding. Okay. Which is near Ogun State. Which is, which is classed as Ogun State. Okay. But it's outskirts, literally, of Lagos. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so, the, that, but it was it was definitely worth. To, that's where, you know, really and truly, places like Abelkuta should be um, visiting spots for people when they what come are to you Lagos. About? Because places like Abelkuta, Nigeria has how many states? Thirty six. I know. Ibadan's a place. Abelkuta, of course. Yeah. Uh, um, Ijebode. You got. But like, um, they, what I was gonna say is like there should be like a proper, like. Well, I maybe there is, I haven't checked, but there should be like a proper Fela museum since he was born in Abelkuta. Oh. People around the world love Fela. Well, you know, Nigeria you should be able to like go, Fela, like the same way you can go to Graceland and but go Ma- see. Fela got cancelled in Nigeria. Don't tell me, dude. No. I'm joking. No, Nigeria doesn't like Fela, though, innit? The, like the government. Oh, of course the government. Yeah, so they don't, they don't celebrate him. Everyone he was cussing champ. that is still alive. Yeah, imagine that. He was making fun of Obasanjo. I was thinking of. Um, and Obasanjo has this. Re- Terribly ridiculous house in Abelkuta. Is that, is that see, where his farm is? Probably. Abasanjo farm, because I went there as a school kid. That's why I was thinking of Olumo Rock, because we went to Abasanjo farm on an excursion as okay. school kids. This nigga came out in um, the robe and he had 50s in his top pocket. No Stacked. way. Stacked. Disgusting. Funny enough, it was um, uh, was something to meet a former president of your country. Yeah. And you're able to go to his farm and he was... You, you met know, him as a former military president. Yes. Just before he was even civilian president. So, wow. Who was president? He might have been president at the time, you know. He Oh, you might have met the actual who was Sani, military who, president. He was after Sani Abacha, wasn't he? Abacha was the last military one. That's what so, I mean. Who so was he, after he, Sani Abacha? He took over, didn't he? Or wh- no, who was it? after him it was... Um, after Sani Abacha was one guy. Um, I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, right after him, I think it was like Abubakar or something. No, like, no, it, no. After Sani Abacha, this is nineties. There was one we had some weird presidents, but um, I yeah, think like the first few uh, civilian ones, because Abacha was the last military one. And my history is terrible, so let me just not embarrass myself. Abacha I... was the last military one, you say? Yeah, after him, the military regime fell. So we now had a military president. Isn't Thinky Buhari or the old ex-military in it? Yeah. So they were military before, and then they came back and as what's civilian the president. What's the difference? Come on, you what's know the, the difference? You know what's the your deal military by now. Military? You know the deal by now, bro. Come on, man. But um, yeah, I mean, gonna say? Um, it, in general, like if Nigeria got its act together, there there is bro, actually don't, there's don't a, talk to me like that, please. There's a mountain resort like called Obudu Mountain Resort. Obudu, it, ob, yes, I think it's called Obudu Mountain. It actually looks amazing. Like when you look at it, you'd be like, "Look at this! This is fantastic." Then I, bro, I, I was, I was like, "Don't talk to me about that." I have I to bring my sugar. I have to bring my family out here. I don't want to hear that. I sugar. started reading the reviews, bro. <laughs> oh, you're right. Actually, in 1999, Abdul Salami, Abu Bakr. Bro, that's what I'm saying. You're oh, making 19, me feel that's like 99. I don't know. No, no, I'm saying after Sani Abacha, though. Who was right after? Okay, Abacha died in 98. Mm. Yeah. Then, who, who, who hold on you? a second. Yes, it was my um, thingy. Um, thingy was the last one. Abu Bakr was the last one. Salami was the last military manager, um, military president. 
um, and about Sanjo became the first um, civilian, civilian one. Okay. And that's who I saw, yeah. Oh, no. In 1999. Okay. I, went, I left Nigeria in 96. So I think Abu Bakr was maybe the, what, the vice president at the time. And no, then I just was president when I was there, you know. Mad. Sani Abachi was president when I went to that farm. That's wild. That's wild. I didn't even remember that. The timelines. You know the funny thing? What you said was so true about, you look at Nigeria and sometimes you think, this place could work. Then you realize, it's not the place that had the issue. It's not like, it's not like everyone's walking around like, yo, if we actually, we could get something popping here. It's not that no one's thought of that. It's a case of, but where's that going to get you? Where is being noble in a country where being a fraud is celebrated going to get you? Bro, do you know what it's paying for right now? I've, I've obviously, like, in order to conclude this, I've typed in list of presidents of Nigeria, but the Wikipedia page is called list of heads of state of Nigeria. Look at the first head of state. Who? Elizabeth II. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, it's paying. That's painful, isn't it? The first. This white woman's picture is right here. Is the first like from obviously from independence, but it is what's the independence if from 1960 when the independence happened to 63, she's still head of state and she never lived there. Did she even did she touch down? She must have touched down. In she had Lil C uh, in, uh, in VI. Maybe she, I know she's touched down in Ghana a lot. I don't know about Nigeria Mad. though. Nigeria's quite. Arrogant, I wonder if she went it? Gambia. I don't get that. You don't know about old white women that go to Gambia? Oh, yeah. But she wasn't <laughs> old then, Ola. <laughs> they don't have to be old. She was in young young white women go as well. They also go Bifa. It's all the... No, nah, but they, they specifically like, go to Gambia for the sex have tourism. I've seen the ones man. that go to Gambia for the sex tourism. I've, I've They're seen the ones that won't them. get nothing in the pubs here. <laughs> <laughs> when you're struggling in the pubs, that's when you go Gambia. Yee. Fuck it, gang Gambia. Gang Gambia. We didn't, even, we didn't even open the pod with the, you know, with the most pressing news. Today's a historical day. Yeah, what, what have I missed? Lano Messi just signed for PSG. Oh, this guy. You want to turn this into a football podcast? No, a podcast. football podcast. This is a, By... a current affairs. <laughs> I don't think you understand. Messi's left his boyhood club to play in Paris. I can't believe it. Did he Did he start at Barcelona? Yeah. They signed him on a napkin when he was 11. On they a didn't napkin? Sign, yeah, because they, they were stalling. The guy was like, yeah, yeah. Then they, they begged, said, look, we've been here for a month. They've got no money. Man. Please just sign this kid. The guy was like, all right, man, just signed it on a napkin. And then they put him in the academy. And then um he um he he had growth issues, so they gave him growth hormones. Are you serious? Yeah, and then he made his debut at 17. Is un growth hormones illegal? Nah. It's not doping. No. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. growth hormones. They just made his body grow in it. <laughs> but it's not yeah, but, I, but what if that's like the secret behind Do all you of think this athlete who ran the hundred meters took everything that was legal? Of course they did. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> What do you mean? But like, I've, I, I would, I could have sworn I've heard that growth hormones. Are it like... depends. It depends. I guess if you're taking it at, you know, 23, 24, it's like, why are you taking growth hormones, bro? <laughs> but at 11, I can understand. At 11, it's medication. Like, it like it at 23, with... you party. <laughs> it ain't like he was playing with the Champions League at 11, nigga. Shit, this... it ain't like how second school was getting so much pressure. I got to take these growth hormones, man. These year 11s be kicking my ass, you know? Oh, so it was more man. of a, you know, just to get him to the level they were. Well, they didn't foresee this. But the interesting thing is, and the, I, the reason why I brought it up was, people were talking about, well, if he loved, because he did a press conference the other day and he was crying that he didn't want to leave, but the financial situation, they couldn't resign him. And so everyone was like, well, if he loved the club so much, why didn't he play for free? And I was thinking to myself, play for free. The only These people who played for free, free? The, the only f- people who played for free were slaves. And we stopped that. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and everybody knows you don't recoup when you play for free. Nah, man. Nah, we still, right we're thing. still trying to get some peace you, from that. You did the right thing, man. You I don't play for you. free? What do you mean, pray? Play, play for for who? These people, these people are creaming off the top already from the jump. By the like, way. His press conference where he was crying, Barcelona was streaming it on their live TV and no. selling <laughs> merchandise of Messi memorabilia. No I said, y'all ain't got way. no shame. Nah, hey, hey, that's... in the words of the great Tupac, it's a dirty game. It's a yo. dirty game, y'all. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Game, oh, it's a dirty it's game, y'all. How can you yo. be leaving a club? And, they, and right underneath it, they're like... <laughs> <laughs> they, they showed links. They put links in the YouTube oh. channel to where you can buy... Season tickets 
for the upcoming season. Fantastic. The bliss is messy. Everybody's Fantastic. watching. Why would you miss the opportunity? Fantastic. I love that. And the so that's what, I, bro, and that's why I say I to people, the when their players letting, it's holding a club to a ransom, don't feel sorry for that club. Because the moment that club wants to discard you, bro. I've seen them put grown men say, you have to go and train with the reserves. We've got no use for you this year. Golly. It's, it's just, and it's the same in every sport. In basketball, players come in, they've trained, they've done the whole preseason. Before the trade deadline, the coach will come and tell them, yeah, we're going to trade you so we can't play you for the next few games because we don't want to risk you getting injured. Can you imagine your life just sitting there thinking, what? <laughs> By the way, and I'm not saying they trade you to a team you dreamt of playing. No. So it's like we're trading you to, to New York. Now you're at the Phoenix Sun. By the way, you live in you live in Tennessee. God, you ain't been to New York before. Your family ain't in New York, but that's where they're trading you to, bro. So go, when you, you, have to go when get you your see first these players in Harlem, bro, <laughs> so you, you have to no. Sometimes you know when players don't make it, so people say, "Oh, he's rubbish." Yeah. Sometimes leaving your country and just going to another place, yeah, another life. Di Maria came to uh, Man United. He's a Argentine from Real Madrid, yeah. to Man United. That nigga spent. Three months is like, I has to go. <laughs> Bruh, do you know? Because that's the thing. It's not it. just moving to a club. It's the whole life stuff. Yeah. Like, imagine you didn't set up in Tennessee. You're the man. They know you're all the clubs. And, like, then you move to New York and nobody gives a nobody damn who get, you are. The web is different. Your children Bruh. are far away. You're just not just. You're not settling. You're spending time on the phone. Because all you're doing is phoning people. Yeah. But, you know, you, you, maybe you're not, you're not gelling with your teammates. Or your teammates go home. Then you don't want to be that leech. You come back around, bro, man. You were here yesterday. God. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be that guy. Yeah, I remember when, when, when they were looking at, like, where would Beckham play next? It was, like, a lot of the discussion was around, like, where Victoria Beckham would like to live. Yeah. And so him ended up playing the LA Galaxy. Fair, I was like, how much was this to do with football? To be fair. And how much is this to do with living in LA? To be fair, Victoria Beckham would live anywhere money lives. Of course. So if it, she played for the Dubai yeah. Dunstables. If I'm Messi, if it, I'm going to Qatar after. You of can course, get a bro, billion a week mean? at least for the next I mean, two years. Paris is still... His contract, by the way, is 50, about 60, pounds, 60 million pounds over two years. It's all right. Because you know what? It's all it's, right. It, everyone's like, it's a strong... How can this happen? But they didn't pay for him. And in football, when you don't pay for a player, you're able to throw more money because you don't have to pay a, a, a transfer fee. Yeah. So what the agents cleverly do is... The money you would use to buy this player is what you use to pay his wages. Okay. So Messi's on stupid, like maybe 500 grand a week. They'll pay him 30 million signing on fee because to buy Messi would have been at least 200 mil. So you work within the parameters. Okay, at least I got, I'm going to at least earn 100 million from this move. Ooh. Yeah. His dad oh. is his agent, so you kept it in the family. Um, yeah, it's just, but the thing is this, Ooh. everyone's like, everyone was saying, how can PSG pull this off? This is not the financial fair play rules. When you sign Messi, you make money. <laughs> mm. For some reason. You just make money comes what, with him. What do you mean? Of money course comes make, with on him. the merchandise alone, bro. Bro, that's what on Barcelona the cared about. That's on how the they merch. put them links. Bro, he the came in on the airport, yeah, with a t-shirt yeah. on. By the time he went to the fans, he had the club's logo t-shirt on. They said, yo, yo, put this on, put this on, put this on. <laughs> Put it up, put it up, put it up. They will drag you away what? and dress you, bro. Because the, the, the merch is going to be mad. The TV rights are going to be mad. Ooh. The interest in French League is going to be mad. So Ooh. he brings so much to the table. Ooh. But I was just wondering to myself, as a person, you know when they say who, to, who much is given, much is expected? I mean, yes. this is a lot. <laughs> it, it is a lot. But to be honest, he's he's he's, he's I think he's past like mm, goat status at this point. Mm, so even if he has a couple of he plays two years and it's nothing yeah, amazing, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be like, well, you got him on the bed and he's still the goat. Well, I, I just meant in the in the in the aspect of dealing with that kind of sorry pressure and intense scrutiny of your life. Yeah, you know how do you fit into that mold of a person? I feel like when you see guys who in operate under intense pressure like that, you're looking at a sociopath. You're looking at somebody who's reached a sociopathic level of, of, of focus, control, of focus, of focus and control over their surroundings. Over bullshit. Yeah, they're not reading comments on Twitter like, "Oh my goodness, so and so said I did." So true. Their life so is true. like, it's just yo. And if you want to be like the wife or the girlfriend, you can't come around them talking. Oh, you know, my back's hurting, and you know, I'm just so stressed right now. Even that's probably going to be controlled. Like, you can't come and bring negativity. I'm focused right now. You want to come in and talk to him about this, uh, any kind of problem, you're probably going to get the brunt of it. He's going to have such a controlled atmosphere that so that he can focus on what he needs to do. 
when you get out on the pitch, people can shout whatever they like at you. You need to be so in your zone. Because you see Make what it, happens Messi to doesn't players. Messi does like a sociopath because he doesn't really talk. But at the same Bro. time, um, <laughs> you don't think there's anyone home the way he just carries himself. Bro, but I mean, but, 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 look, but look, at, look at Ronaldo. Don't you think he also applies himself like a, like a bit I of a sociopath? I don't think he had sex to have kids. Bro, this what I'm saying. Because it doesn't affect his body. This is what I'm saying. He's probably the kind of guy who had it done surgically. Yeah, yeah. No, and no, a, ver- and a very non-invasive procedure. I, I don't think he would have sex during the season because, you know, they said sex makes legs weak. Yeah. That's what the boxers say anyway. Yeah. Remember the athlete that, had, that uh, was caught, well, he ran the race and they said he used a drug and his excuse was like, you know, smashing my, I was having sex with my wife. We had um, a lot <laughs> of sex. I how you made that respectful. We, we had a lot of sex the, lot, the night before. Wow. And my, my testosterone level was high. And they, they they checked how they confirmed that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they had his wife on the stand, like, "Yes, your honor, he just smashed." I mean, bro, this um this level that you have to operate at, everything becomes about what you're trying to do. Everything okay. needs to. Everything is, fo- you have to fit everything around the fact that I am this star footballer and I have to perform. Mm. It, I mean. If you can be at that level and, and talk about balance, having a balanced life or whatever it is, you're, you're damn near superhuman. But most of these guys are not going to be balanced human beings. They're going to be very, very, to the point of like not caring what anybody has to mm, say. Jordan's a bit of a sociopath. Of course he is. Come on, man. You watch that documentary. Yeah. You don't want to hang out with Jordan. No. You want to play with him and win. No, and if he punched and- me in the face in the gym, although one guy was like, you know, I think it was Kobe that hit him or Jordan, one of them hit him. Like, what did you do? This is me, the best player on the team. <laughs> and about to ruin our chances of winning a championship. Nah, we ain't, nah. <laughs> he just let it out. Because but if, if, if Jordan punches you, you punch Jordan back, the news is going to be you punch Jordan. I'm punching Jordan back, though. Uh, but, no, one's, yeah. no, no one's sucking me in. in no, no. No. And no, that's the reason why no, you're, you no, went. No. He no. went on the team, bro. No, not really. Because there's other players who. <laughs> I mean, there's other reasons he had went that. on the team, but. There's other players who would never have had that. It's only, he knew who he could punch. He yeah, punched I Steve mean, Kerr. He didn't punch a Horace Grant when he was there. <laughs> I think he would have punched Dennis Rodman. No. I feel like Dennis Rodman would have liked it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you taste the blood? Yeah, I'm saying, ugh. What's like, it called? Ugh. When, when <laughs> Kobe and Shaq, Shaq, Kobe and Shaq used to fight on the, tr- on, used to go at it and fight. Shaq and who? Kobe. They had fights. What? You ain't trained in them, in them practice. Kobe for bare people because you're not gonna have it from someone well, punch you. You're just gonna sit there and come back. Nah, fam. You, I'm, I will wait till the, everything calms down. I'm that guy that will jump up and during when it's not maybe three games later. Like nigga, what? <laughs> 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 you still holding on to that shit, <laughs> bro? I'm I am petty wow. like that. I cannot be violated like that. I would. I not know be Shaq able to was fight. out here fighting like that. Shaq, you know he seen with Shaq with Charles Barkley when they had a fight. No, nah, they had a fight on camera, know. man. And he said that they said they both got in trouble because their mums called them and said, "What are you guys doing on national television?" I mean, yeah. it sounds realistic to be fair. You know what? Men are men are men are such babies. You know, testosterone, ego, and bravado yeah. always leads to meet, meet, meet me in the locker room to do what? I hate when people say that. You know, meet, meet me, me upstairs. upstairs. So like, bro, you want me to carry energy and anger <laughs> up a flight of stairs and still have the same vim, vim <laughs> when I get there? <laughs> After you got halfway up the stairs, you're like, you right. know what? I ain't even that By the way, you walked, well, you get time to process. As you're walking, you're like, I don't even feel like fighting no more. I was when I when I was at work, when I used to work at um, EE, and one of my colleagues got on my nerves and I pushed him in the chest. Wow, at work? Yeah. Pushed wow. him. Wow. Okay. He was winding me up, man. Like I t- this is what I told you. Jordan couldn't punch me. I'd bite him. What's- <laughs> <laughs> it was one of them ones where I worked on the weekend, and I don't work weekends. Yeah. And I was talking to a customer. And obviously, this is why I never used to tell people I was a comedian because people try and throw it in your face. Okay. But they all knew I was a comedian. It was this, these times it was too late for me to hide it. Of course, yeah. Because yeah. I was coming from B. I'm like, oh, shit. So my brother's like, why, how did they know you? I, I do comedy. Then your manager gives you that, you know, what's the, what, what line do you think your manager gives you after that? Oh, they, what, where can we come out and see you? Nah, not that. You're tell not us funny, a joke. Though. Oh, you're not funny though? Yeah. Oh, wow. My manager, manager was Jamaican. Okay. He didn't hire white people either. That was his way of giving back to the earth. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> my, my, my managers are like, when can we come and see you, man? Really? I don't yeah. understand why you've not brought them in. 
I like I like a bit of separation. Nigga, please, they got money. True, but I mean, like they might invest. They might take it more seriously. They might give you a little, a little leg up. Pause. If they, if they, oh, bro, oh, give you a little leg up. Yeah, you know? it, <laughs> if they want to come and invest in Sunday service or something like that, yeah, actually, I'll bring them out. But and that's the thing, you just could come to the comedy club them. and then, like, next time I'm trying to. You know, what? every once in a while they start quoting my jokes saying. at me. I'm trying to be. Saying. I hear what you're saying because yeah. also. You don't want to be that comic where, you know, you're on stage. My boss is here. I, I really don't like that vibe. Yeah, bro, that sounds like you're that. not <laughs> you're not taking this seriously. Bro, do you know what I'm saying? You know, the rest of the audience start looking at you like, Whoa. Oh, so you ain't you ain't professional like that? <laughs> <laughs> no need to follow him. Bro. <laughs> It'll be at work on Monday. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know? You're right. Bro, you're right, you're yeah. right. So, yeah, I was, so I was talking to this girl, but I don't know what happened. But they thought I was just being excessively long with this customer. So mm. they complained to the manager who then said because I swap shifts mm. he said no more swapping if people are going to take the piss so now everyone's going to put that on me in it mm. oh why did they stop the shift of course Fumbi came in so I went to talk to my manager on a level saying listen this is what happened it wasn't da 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 yeah. the team leader comes in because like, you talking about Saturday he goes yeah you're just doing your shit comedy you're just a shit comedian hey this is me huh hey I could already feel the the, the boiling inside of me because one I'm not a shit comedian I didn't, I, and he'd never <laughs> seen me perform so I don't know why he was saying such things when he'd never seen me on stage before and he just kept on winding me up so I just yeah. pushed him in the chest and I backed up and I said boss and move boss and <laughs> motherfucking move and then he started screaming human resources I was like my nah I can't take stuff like that man nah so my manager sends me upstairs right for help, my manager man. sends me upstairs to go and sit down and cool off because he has to now deal with this so I'm sitting there just thinking, oh, I've lost my job because you can't really push someone at work. Yeah. This motherfucker walks into the little canteen area. You wait till after work. This is me, bro. It's 10 in the morning. We finish at 6. <laughs> there's, there's, you don't want to fight. That's what you're saying. No, how can you come back up and be like, hey, watch when I catch you. Yeah, by the way, you called HR. Where, where, by the way, there was no cameras where we were and we were both upstairs. You understand? We could have got it on there. And I was saying, this is me, bro. I, at that point, I was, I, I'd was already give, gotten over it. I said, like, bro, it's 10 o'clock. We finish at 6. Ain't nobody fighting you. I'm going to have to sell phones to customers. I might make a buff thing and, you know, get a little happy. I might get a link later on. I'm not going to wait for 6 o'clock. <sighs> so that was quite disappointing. Oh, bro, that was hilarious to me, actually. What, which part? The, the idea, the fact the guy, the guy still, after you called HR, you're still coming up to be like, yeah. A manager yeah. came up to me and was like, you know, I spoke to my area manager. I, and he said, six. he said, because, you know, he was, because you were provoked, you know, we have to look at this differently. I was like, you were seeing right then, I was telling you, can you tell him to leave? This is a me and you conversation. You're just a team leader. Team leader's not a real role. <laughs> it's not a real thing. <laughs> this is the real workplace politics. <laughs> yeah, this team is not a real thing. You're just a guy that keep, the man doesn't want to do anything. He says you'd go and do it. Facts. So don't don't get Facts. excited. Anybody can be a team leader. <laughs> Anybody. Don't do the team leaders like that. Somebody. No man. Those. Every team leader I worked with was a prick, overpowered. Yeah, but it's, it's the thing. You remember that Eddie Murphy line: "Give a nigga rope, want to be a cowboy." It's yeah. the exact thing. Anybody with any kind of small power, just give them any kind of authority and watch them change. Security on the door. Could you step here, please? All right. All right, E.D. I mean. <laughs> I forgot you're protecting the crown jewels in there. <laughs> like, just moving funky. Bruh. But I mean, that is, it's a weird one because you're right. In some ways, once you have power or you have some authority, people have a license to... Be a or, dick. Or, uh, yeah, to be, you know, un, un, unpleasant in some ways. But also, having power and authority attracts people doing that to you or testing you. And so on. once people see you in a position of authority, now they want to test you and see okay, if, you can, if you're side. really that guy. The flip side. Yeah. So it's almost yeah, but like... but when I'm not testing you, though. Yeah, I'm, I, it, There was no reason for right. him to do it to you or for any team leader to try and be... A not, but I'm saying that sometimes these guys become that way because they're like... If I'm not... If I'm not, everyone's going to take advantage. me for a puppy that. show out here. And I it's hear, like, but I do know bouncers try and boy you because they want to impress girls. If they make you look like a dickhead in the line, you probably won't get the number later on. Then he can be in there and, and move. And, and that's why I hate bouncers. There's some scumbag bouncers out there. There are. But there bro, are. There was, back in the day, I don't know if I've ever told you this story. But back in the day, anyway, we used to sneak into this nightclub in Croydon. We used to uh, sneak in? Well, fake IDs. So you and your wife friends? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, you know, most I, of my... You know, I don't know if black people did fake ID. There were, no, there were... Actually, no, there was a couple of black girls. Because we just went to the club. There was... <laughs> 
I don't remember ever being ID'd in the club. I mean, I raved that. I started raving at 16, 17. Yeah, so this was 16, 17 yeah. times. Anyway, the place was called the Blue Orchid. It doesn't exist anymore. We it was clearly not. It was referred to as the Blue School Kid because everyone knew that like everyone in there is flipping underage anyway. Bro, there's I one think time you guys knew. I don't think the world. I don't not think the it was world, but everyone in Croydon. If okay, you okay. if you know Croydon, you know that yeah, the Blue School yeah. Kid is like full of underage um, people. So. So flipping, there's one night in particular that they were giving me hassle, right? I, I had my little uh, ID situation and they were just acting like, oh, yeah, he's not wearing the right stuff. And, oh, what yeah, were you wearing? So, I can't even remember, bro. But it was just I one of those like, times. I remember, like, man. I you, can't you remember. You remember sneaking bro. to the car? You don't remember what you wore? No. Damn, that's a shame, man. I mean, I know it would have been something appropriate for a night out. but it I don't know what been... you dressed like, bro. You just hip hop in it because you had that American influence in you. Not for blue school kids, bro. So you need my Timberlands and a fitted hat with a lumberjacks. <laughs> nah, that was for the that was for the shrimps. That was for the shrimps, bro. Oh no, no, you got the wrong night. That was for um, <laughs> that was for the other night. Nah, for the house parties for the shrimps. I was yeah, I was definitely that 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 that, that little NBA tracksuit. I yep, done picked yep. up with all the emblems on it from, <laughs> from, from well, New York. Are you so influenced by Americans? I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I just loved it. I just loved because everything about it. The funny thing is, whenever someone dressed like that in college, we just knew it was either from Africa or from America. <laughs> because we, we knew, you know, we don't dress like that. You know, you saw the guy with the durag and the, and the fit. Yeah. Like, durag and the fit. No, but there was a time where, like, even Dizzy Rascal was wearing stuff that looked like it came straight from America. What, the durags? Yeah, the durag. He wore a durag, didn't he? Dizzy? I don't know if it was the durag, but everyone had the, the fitted, the, the new era caps. Yeah, the new era caps. Fitted hats have always been a thing. We've always had that. But yeah. the socks hat under it. <laughs> we don't do that. The, the wave cap under the fitted. We don't do that. I mean... Or the baggy jeans. And we don't do Timberlands. I mean... Bro. Girls do Timberlands over here. Do they? Yeah. These days. Well... I back then, back then, back I got. Yes, back I then, went yeah, to New York. Yeah. I got Tim's, and I. I, I, I was got Tim's. Yeah. First time I came from Nigeria, I bought Tim's. Of course, one hundred and twenty <laughs> pounds. I Golly! Hey, right, when Tim's come out the box. Yeah. By the way, I always bought the bit. My sizes were always too big. I didn't understand why. Okay. It's American shoes. Of course. So bro. size eleven was like size shack. <laughs> size shack. So I had to reduce my size in it. Yeah. But when I said, but the thing about Tim is this: when someone steps on the front, that's it, man. This is done. But I used to fight people. One time, know? I thought I thought I came up with the final solution to clean Timberlands. I tried to clean it with steam, bro. And it looked like it was working at first until the steam dried. You fucked up your teams? Bruh. Yeah. Um, hey, but by, by this way, point, it was already scuffed. Okay. So I was just last ditch attempt. I'd, okay. I'd got the new buck brushes. I'd got the new buck cleaner. You know what? God punish new and buck. <laughs> none of them products work. I done bought the <laughs> That's spray. That's what I'm saying. I done bought the spray. Bruh, I done bought the, the, the They had a good the hustle. Leaflet. Like oh my goodness. Sucked me in. But I used to spray that shit with nothing. Bruh, nothing. Nothing. That's why the day, I, the day I thought about maybe clean it with steam, I really thought I came up with something. And while it's wet, it looks like you really clean yeah, it. Yeah, same thing with the spray. When you spray, like, oh, shit, back to normal. Once it dries, right. you're like, this shit ain't nothing. And the thing about Tim's, yeah, the front is the always the only place. Of I course, guess bro. What do you mean? Of they're course. They're so sexy. They're worker boots, you know. Uh, bro. Only black people can make work boots bro. look like swag. Bro. Nah, and Timberland leaned into it as well. They were like, oh, this is working. They did they, it from they, a distance, from a distance. Bruh. Because I never course. saw Tupac poster in a Timberland shop. Of course not. No, no, they don't do it like that. No, no, no. That's not you how they lean bare in. bare wood and lumberjack. Of course, bro. They stay true <laughs> to the brand. But their boat shoots were fire. Bruh, I never went into the, I never went that deep into the Timberland catalog, bro. You didn't go into the boat bro. game. To the what? You didn't go into the boat shoes game. I did boat shoe game, but, but not from Timberland. Timberland no. lasted longer. Okay. You know when you bought the budget the H&M ones, ones. They, they fold, yeah, they folded yeah, yeah, after yeah. three years. Yeah, yeah. Timberland's ones lasted way longer. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I would I, You know yeah, what we used to call them in Nigeria? Moccasins. Yeah, but moccasins are a style of shoe in general. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. what we used to call boat shoes in Nigeria. Okay. Like, if you wear moccasins to school. Bro, you're the... That, yeah, and, hey, what that you mean? Timberlands, if you wore Timberlands to school, yeah, you parked yeah. you parked in a different zone and you didn't even drive. Is it? Yeah. They had special parking. Yeah, special, <laughs> you don't drive. <laughs> <laughs> it was just levels. And he's wearing teams. They don't say Timberlands, like he's wearing teams. Oh, he's man. They call it buff up, man. When you buff up. Oh. That's one thing about Nigeria. The slang I miss wearing teams, actually. I, I remember, I miss feeling how I felt. They weren't even that comfortable for me, but... I just you know, I, how I felt anything. when when I landed with them. You know, I feel mad, I, but I start doing mad hip hop shit like you know, <laughs> bro. Of course, you're this bar kid. <laughs> bro, you start stomping <laughs> everywhere. 
<laughs> you start stomping them. <laughs> if I were Timberlands at a show, I'll put my foot up on the on the oh, stage. Well, of course you would. Tims. <laughs> nah, you got to stomp someone out after the show yeah, when you got yeah, the Tims yeah. on. Tims on. Yeah, nice. I, na- I mean, now nah, we're flipping Doc Martens because Doc Martens are expensive. They are. They are. Although my I got friend, free, who is but, my, you yeah. know, I had a connect who worked for Doc Martens. She gets money off. Okay. And I forgot who it was. My goodness. Mm-hmm. What a shame. Who it is. I was... Uh, that was nice. A little addition to the pod. Dr. Martin's are expensive, you know. Yeah. I only like them on girls, though. I don't really... Not that I like any shoes on guys, but... <laughs> I was about to say, which shoes do you like on guys, bro? No, but you know, you know what I mean? Like, you can see man in crap and be like, okay. But I see man in Dr. Martin's, I'm like, okay. But the, 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 I like the Doc Martens that I have. I don't really like, like, in terms of for guys, I don't really like the full range of it. I was like, I, I believe you're going to wear doc, those Doc Martens. You know the ones I'm talking about? You know the heavy metal boots? You know the yeah, yeah, yeah. house in the yeah, middle of yeah, yeah, that yeah. vibe? Yeah. I think you have to go full attire. Of course. You see what but I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. for them white comics that used to do cocaine in the 80s. If they want to do that, I'm cool with that. For me, personally, I like the, the little lighter ones that I've got right now. But for the girls, oh yeah, the girls ones, oh, they look... They look nice. Oh yeah, when they wear when they wear Doctor Minds, it just gives yeah. a gives them a, a, a vibe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look how you kind of feel like, hey, she's a little freak. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you make the connection, but you be looking at like, okay, I see you little Doc Minds. You, you know, know, it's just like you just seem like you're out there. Yeah, you out there. You you know how a couple piercings no one knows yeah, about. Yeah, okay, okay. something like that. Yeah, yeah you got yeah, a tattoo yeah. on your on your cervix. Remember <laughs> 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 that, that tattoo, the the shoulder blade, <laughs> the clavicle, bro. That's the one, the clavicle, <laughs> the cervix. The cervix. Is, <laughs> the cervix is the opening where the vagina meets the womb, bro. I know, man. I was just being Golly. Crazy. But yeah, you know those people that, that tattoo those intimate places? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the most painful part of your body. Of You're just course, like, bro. really? I'm like, get a tattoo here. You know, like, oh, didn't it hurt? You know what? Pain is something I like to experience. <laughs> I don't know why I did that voice. But I yeah. think that's where I'm going to get a tattoo. You're not getting a tattoo. I am. You're not a tattoo person, bro. Yeah, I'm going to get a tattoo right above my wedding ring. Same what? Just the wedding date. In goofy, Roman numerals. Goofy as hell. Good thing I wasn't doing it to impress you. Good stuff because I wouldn't be impressed. Fantastic. But then again, I was going to get a that quickly. of a bandana across my shoulder. Oh, bro. Come yeah, on. You are not the subtle. best to speak. Come on, man. A bandana over your shoulder. You, you had know, mouth. No one else, though. You have the mouth to open, bro. You would know, but no one else would. Okay, but but the whole point is you can't then say that that's goofy because you flipping... But you don't know what co- the bandana represents. Co- you flipping copying your favorite rapper, bro. No, no, no. I'm saying... I'm saying... Hold on, be strong when it's on this one. No. <laughs> that didn't even make any sense. No. <laughs> Hold on, be strong. Is but that the quote for today? No. Quote for today when it's is, on, it's on, but hold on. That's a good quote, bro. Billy Holiday said, Baby. Um, it's funny God watching young the people react to, hold his own. to old hip hop. They have no idea what they're talking about. And it's just like, oh. Like one girl was like, "To us, God bless the child that can hold his own." It's like, "Oh my God, I've heard that. I've heard that somewhere before." I was like, "Yeah, Billy Holiday." <laughs> <laughs> he literally said, <laughs> "No, never be track. No, never be track." It's only one time he said, "You know what, Billy Holiday said, say, baby." But he said, yeah. "God bless the child that can, can hold, hold his, his own. own." Indeed, and he's bleed. So he's done it before as well. Oh, okay, so okay. Song. It's funny because Tupac was probably hip to Billy Holiday. I didn't know who she was. I was like, who is this Billy Holiday woman? Let me just Google her now. Oh, it wasn't Google. Let me uh, <laughs> let me Check Netscape. In the, in the, in the, <laughs> Netscape. <laughs> let me Netscape this bitch. Let me let me check the encyclopedia. <laughs> let me let uh, me type her into what, Microsoft what and Carter. The, what was the early search <laughs> engines? Let me ask Jeeves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me let go me on Alta Vista on. real quick. Yeah, Alta Vista. Yeah, let me do that real quick. So that's dead. Though. How could you have a whole search engine be one of the first ones in the market and just be non-existent now? How you lose that bad? They're not. They're not. They're not non-existent. Google bought them. Did Google bought us Jeeves and Alta Vista? We all bought them or had a conversation. Listen, we're going to take over anyway. So oh, you, you, you get bro. with us. Ask Jeeves real... was dope, though. Had the best porno links. God, this guy. What else did you need to ask Jeeves? No, there's no way you're asking Jeeves. Jeeves, <laughs> how many can she fit in her mouth? You, think, you like, don't think anyone's asked Siri best porno links? Siri, uh, I've never her, considered things. that. I'm not on Apple, so I don't know what Siri does. I can't bro, stand that... Siri. 
You was searching up porn on dial up. You wanted the original. You didn't though. They said the internet. I was looking for games in dial up days, bro. You got to speak quicker than that. I was was looking for gays. I was like, well, you know. Games. Games. Uh, Oh, okay. Games. On dial up. Games. When I was on dial up. Actually, maybe towards the end. Who was more lucky to to, uh, to, to achieve their goal? Me downloading um, porn or you playing a game on dial up? I mean. To be fair, no, I, I, I did watch porn on dial up. I'm remembering now. What, what, since the internet was birthed, that's what it was used for. No, but at the beginning, like I literally everywhere there was internet, I just wanted to like get games. Well, when I was, when yeah, I started when out. I first started on the internet, all I was doing was downloading Tupac pictures. Tupac pictures, bro. I would download at least wow. three to four pictures a day. Mad. Yeah, Look at that. That was what I spent my time. That's what the internet was was good for. I remember one time you they were trying to get you to pay for stuff. And one of the guys was advising me, saying, look, I wouldn't put my details on the internet. That's like waving up your card in Oxford Circus. Waving yeah. up your credit card in Oxford Circus. Nuts. Flash forward now, shit, you put your, you don't even hesitate. You put your bloodline, your bloodline on there if you want. Bruh. It's times have changed. I remember when I was young, when I was a young gun. Because like, you know, you know, in those days, like if you could open up a Word document and type like, oh, this way those computers maybe yes, we should basically, basically yeah. yeah so them days like i, I was like oh I'm, I'm gonna be a hacker like i'm gonna make computer games or i'm gonna start a website or something like i had all these different computer based ideas because you, you could do word microsoft word yeah my mom really gassed me up made me feel like i knew computers and you know like we would learn stuff at school and i'd really feel like yeah i'm on my way obviously i didn't know the full scape of what computers could do and what they would become and so on but at that time i felt like i was pretty good with computers because that's what my environment showed me. I had this idea for this website. It was going to be called xcode.com. And it was going to be like this community where we just share like flipping uh, links for free games and links for uh, um, um, like basically like porn and all this kind of all the stuff that you'd want as a teenager. Just be like this forum or this on. I didn't know what a forum was or anything like that, but I wanted to create it. And I remember I started drawing out logos and whatnot as a kid. So what happened? I, I didn't know how to make a real website. What I saw was that on Microsoft Word, they were like, do you want to save this as a web page? So I thought, if I make it on Microsoft Word, I can save it as a web page. And then one day I can like get to it on the internet. I didn't understand that you need a server, you need space, you need to like put it in HTML, you need to upload it, blah, blah, blah. Just learn that. I didn't know at that time. At the time where I was writing all this, where I was coming up with this idea for Xcode, it was all just an like... How old were you? I must have been... You don't remember much, do you? I must have been 11. Okay. Wow. I mean, 11, you know, you. I, I, I totally understand that, why you'd think you were good at computers because you could turn on and off. Pretty much. Yeah. No, but like, you know, they when at school they taught us like basic commands so you know when the screen's black and you're typing it's and just you white you, and you, you feel like gates in this month, I thought, oh my goodness look at me i'm hacking right <laughs> now i was running basic commands bro. man press alt control delete and for oh yep. shit oh. <laughs> oh shit oh the days when i used to use them little shortcuts oh, my mom be like ah oh, <laughs> yeah my boy more computer ah Gassing you. we have to buy a computer into the house why is good on computers did you yeah, my mom bought one eventually. We had like three computers in our in our house. My dad, we had a shop in Lagos, a video club, and we had computers that my dad would bring from Nigeria, from London to Nigeria. Oh yeah. And so you know, remember the early days of Windows and the when the screensaver comes, it's like a pipe thing. That shit used to make me blow my mind. Like I used to love screensavers. Screens, oh bro, I, I used to try and find the best screensaver I could I would find. Oh, change it, bro, all the yeah, settings. Change the, the, the wallpaper every five minutes. The wallpaper, all the toolbars would yeah. be pink, and yeah. that, I, I found when you could like move the mouse and it looks like there's a trail of. Yeah, 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 arrow, yeah, bro, yeah, I did yeah, everything. Yeah. You could do the mouse where it has an echoing sound. Yeah. That was a bit annoying. Bruh, I was but so then, guessed. So I've always, been, yeah, I've always been around computers, but I, I wouldn't say I'd known them, but I've always been around them. Yeah. But my cousin was the one that introduced us to Apple. Okay. And we were like, nah, man, ain't nobody buying Apple. It's too complicated. Da, 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 da. I would never touch a PC again in my life. For real? Yeah, Apple's... One thing I can confirm. Once you go black, you never go back. That's a myth. But once you go Apple, you never go back to Microsoft. That's true. It's not 100%. True. 100%. I've never seen anyone say, I went from um, Microsoft. No one's ever gone from I Apple to both, Microsoft. I got both, basically, because of work. So no one's ever gone from Windows. Apple to Microsoft. No one's you know what? Fuck Apple. I'm going back to, I'm going to Microsoft. People have, though. Well, to do what? Because they're sick and tired of the prices. The Apple prices. Well, we don't want broke motherfuckers in our community. 
Bro, to be fair, do you Apple, have shares in Apple? No, Apple Apple um make the best for me anyway, the best uh laptopy thingy mm-hmm. desktop. By the grace of God, when God blesses me with um money, um I'm getting that Mac um the T V one. The iMac. Yeah. Okay. With the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> with the big screen. That is okay. it's too sexy. And I want the fish tank. Um Screensaver. Oh, okay. Yeah, man, I got it planned out <laughs> on the fish tank saver. But what this I was saying guy, was, like, you know, these are your aspirations. But what I was just trying to say was, Apple make really good, but their phones can go and suck seven. seven well, charges. yeah, a lot of people are divesting from the Apple ecosystem altogether because they're like, that's how you keeping us consistently looped in. Is that like, oh, well, if you have the phone, you have the laptop. You have yeah. the laptop. You go Which get the AirPods sense, and blah though. blah. My and friend keep... went from. Apple to from Samsung to Apple because she thought you know she she said she's she's not, she doesn't know why she made such a bad decision in her life. Wow. Yeah. Think about Samsung. If you're on Android, yeah. it's, it's user friendly. Yeah. iPhone is like it's Mac. Yeah. It's it's Apple friendly. Yeah. I don't mind that for the for the laptop because <clears throat> that's okay, but I don't need my phone to to say to me you can't listen to Tupac's album because you know he he dis iTunes. <laughs> you know, I don't need that. Yeah, man. I mean, it's um, it's 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 something where like I I, I try and keep my hands in both because they both got their pluses and minuses. Oh, what have you got now? Uh, I got I've got an iPhone and a One Plus. I actually really love the fact that I have a One Plus. The One Plus phones, man, they're just really good value, it's really Google decent phone, right? phones. Pardon? Is it Google phone or Samsung? Uh yeah, it's like it's basically built on like Google okay. kind of. Uh, Funny framework. enough, because I worked in a phone shop, innit? Yeah. So I knew the gig, the jig from my first smartphone was an iPhone. Okay. I bought the iPhone 3s. Oh yeah, that must have been popping at that time, bro. The, when I saw the apps on it, bro. I, everyone was like, "This what's apps? <laughs> 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 it was apps." Yeah. And then because I worked in the phone shop, I was one of the first one of, uh, to get a BlackBerry. Okay, hey, that was BBM my first one. BBM changed the game. BBM By was the way, a I moment. put all my friends in on BBM. Yeah. The thing about BBM that blew my mind was the little road tree thing in the middle and the buttons, and it looked so businessy. Yeah. You looked like you were really somebody. No, nah, bro, I, 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 the summer before I went to uni, I was hanging out because I was working basically at this company with these guys who had money, right? So they were a small company, but they made a lot of good money. They had the original Blackberries. And, bro, I was acting like a little be like when they, when they bought the blackberry i was like oh well, you got the, the blackberry ones. the gray ones that, i had the gray where one. you roll on the yeah, side yeah yeah yeah. i had that one. Oh, so that he, one, he let those, me those, he, there's he, one before that I yeah the next one up yeah so <laughs> he let me he let me hold it i was like oh my goodness what is it? i was way too excited so i was like in my head it was like oh one day like when i make it like i'm gonna have a blackberry like that's what you get that guy i got the blackberry i think it was curve or something like the that blackberry curve yeah and my girlfriend at the time had the bold and Bruh, her best friend used to bold was mock me. Because the bold was big, innit? Yeah. I loved that one. But I had the, the grey one. Not the side one, but the yeah. first one used to roll. Okay. But I had BBM, but nobody was on BBM. Oh, so it was just there. That's but mad, I had bro. a couple people there and they were messaging. So my friends were like, what are you doing? I'm just BBMing someone. Yeah. What, is that separate from text? So everybody realised yeah. the convenience of messaging. Yeah. Blackberry went... Bro, but Grand I was in an upgrade. Everybody had the new BlackBerry Curve. Man. I was out here with my grey BlackBerry. <laughs> to the point where man's just telling me, you need to upgrade, bro. Bro, I brought you lot in. <laughs> <laughs> then I upgraded. Then BlackBerry went crazy. And then yeah. I saw it decline in the phone shop. It was amazing. Do you know what killed them? Uh, WhatsApp. Not even WhatsApp. Um, internet on phones this size. Remember, BlackBerrys were small. Yeah. And they didn't really care about surfing. Nobody, yeah. you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't do your Google Maps on your BlackBerry. You BBM'd until you died. And you updated Bro, your status. I used to use maps on it as well. It was difficult it to was use It was terrible. Maps. Right. It was the worst. <laughs> right. And that's oh, that's what terrible. we used to get for customers. Yeah. Listen, look, the maps are not great. But you can BBM yeah. your friends. And then they made the 8520, which was for the BBM for kids in school. Mad. Because everybody wanted a BlackBerry. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, then yeah. it just went. Yeah, my last BlackBerry was the BlackBerry Touch. I where you could. One. The you black could, one. Yeah, you could yeah. touch on the screen yeah, and you could slide yeah, it up yeah, yeah, and it had the keypad. I had that underneath. one. But that, that time it was dying though. It, well, yeah, it was on its way out. It was 100%. on its way out. But I was still trying to be like diehard Blackberry. Me too. Me. I had two phones. I had that one and I had Blackberry. Because everybody had Blackberry in phone. Yeah. But then that after that, it just went. It just went and down. And I couldn't. Samsung took over. 
It was Samsung and Apple. Motorola died. Bro, Motorola died, the Razer. Man. They tried, man. The Razer. Do you know who surprised me though? Who I didn't think could die. Nokia, bro. Bro, we started this gangster shit. Bro, Nokia. And it's the how, how Nokia suck it? Nah. I, I even called Nokia. Y'all got to come on. I'm seeing the new. <laughs> y'all got to do better than this. Bro, they had. The last the, one was a tiles. Do you, know, do you know how Nokia had the game on? Look, the charger, bro. Remember that they charger? Had the, they had the same charger for, for all the phones. Phone. So you had that's to have why they a didn't Nokia have the charger. game on lock. Bro, that, that's why they had the game lock for some time. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, then, then, bro. Because Apple will change their charger in a second. And, and not only that, at the, the time, what Apple did was they started making it a USB. Mm hmm. And. I don't know whether Nokia didn't move with that or whatever it is. I guess Nokia maybe didn't innovate in terms of all the apps and the smartphones and that kind of stuff. But yo, for the time that Nokia was king, I don't know what happened to their bro. software makers because Motorola didn't. Motorola branched into phones. Yeah, but they've been doing shit for the army, radio walkie talkies, yeah, and yeah. all that. When you watch the um, NFL, the guys got the thingy Motorola. Yeah. So they don't really give a shit about the phone industry. They still yeah. do their walkie talkie thing. Yeah. But Nokia was phones. Yeah. Do you know I knew the people. I knew the capital of Finland because of Nokia. Wow, Helsinki. So like, right, where is the headquarters of Nokia? It's the capital of Finland, Helsinki. Mad. We had to do that as a test because Nokia was so popular in the phone game. But they released this phone that tried to compete with the Samsung because it was the tiles. And it had good interface when you touched it, it flipped like tiles. Yeah, yeah. That was trash. Oh, that's a damn shame. It was just you know, you know the funny thing, working in the phone shop and going through phones. I could readily tell yeah. what was easy to use and what was just, bro, this is unnecessary. Bro, I got the LG at one point. With the LG. The, where you pulled out the little stylus and he used that. LG. Bro, they that made phone the was, worst phones. Bro, it was terrible. But they had the LG um, lipstick. They had these really cute phones that women loved. Okay. So that sold for them. Yeah. It was just the look of the phone. Yeah. Sometimes when the phone looks pretty, believe me, if you can make a call from it, good luck. Bro, let's go even back right, right, right to the beginning. Do you remember... Your first phone? Okay, my first phone was an Ericsson. Which one? Like, before the there Ericsson. was Sony Ericsson. It oh, was just Ericsson. Ericsson. The one with the... It was, big, a, it was the, a brick the glass with, with, a, with, a, with an antenna. Antenna with the glass buttons. It, yeah, it was kind of like glass buttons. Yeah. You could, you could like, uh, clip off the, the front of face and put another one on. Oh, the Ericsson's were doing that? Yeah. Nokia said that, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm Nokia. older than you, so, you know, my first phone was... Um, the suitcase. Was the, the, briefcase, <laughs> the briefcase. The briefcase with the, with the aerial. No, my first phone was the um, the Face Off Nokia. What, the 3310? Yes. Oh. The Face Off one. The one okay. when they introduced, you know, the face covers. When yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Me yeah, and my yeah. girlfriend went to Enfield. And Those, that time. That phone was legendary. That time, that time yeah. Time. You're 16, 17. Yeah. And uh, you, your boy gets a phone. We had to just get a phone. You have to do a credit check. Nobody knew what a credit check was or if you were going to pass one. Nice. I went, listen, you've passed for two phones. I got two phones. Man, take out two, man, man takes out two lines. No way. Bro. By that time, I think it was like ten pounds a month. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. On one to one. Yeah, one to one. It wasn't. You weren't gonna die. Dun three evenings and three weekends. Maybe it was twenty pounds. I don't know. Three evenings and three yeah. weekend calls. Terrible decisions we all made. Of course. Because by the by the end of our first year, we were heavily in debt to the network, and our credit rating had been fucked up. But that was my first phone, the Nokia Face Off. I changed it from a yellow one to a silver case. <sighs> Yeah. You must have been the guy. I was going from my house to college in Tottenham to go and oppress everybody. Oh, my goodness. I left my phone on the bus. Oh. oh. Luckily for me, I didn't take insurance because who does? So that was it. Then you know what? It's so funny when you're young. You have no sense. So you call up the thing. My phone's lost. Oh, well, there's nothing we can do. So what? You expect me to be paying a contract without no phone? Yeah, that's exactly what we expect. <laughs> that time to lose the phone. So I was just like, wow. what? So I had to pay up this contract without a phone. Hey, yeah, bro, that's man. painful, you know. Yeah. That's painful. I, um, one time my phone got stolen. Guess guess what? That time, then I got the Nokia, thir which one did you say, the 3310? Yeah, the 3310. I think the next one was the 3320. This one looked like an egg-shaped phone. It looked like, um, not the Matrix, but the Matrix no, one. No, 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 no. The, the face-off one was the 50... There's two faces. 5210. That's the one that you can take both the front and back. So the 3310 is the egg-shaped one. That's the smaller one, the egg-shaped one. The 3210 is the very thin one. Oh my god. This is this is the WAP phone. Ah! Now my phone was older than that. I'm talking about the one with the aerial. 
Yo, wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm in the game, bruv. Do you remember when they made the leaf one, bruv? So I was, my one was the this one. That, the one that See was that like one a square. The black one. The orange logo at the bottom. Yeah, bro, of course, that was my man. One. That was my one. That's then the I had 50, that That's the 52 or 54 10. Or I don't know. Then I had... I had, I had that's, the, the, that's the other phone I had as well. I had all three of them. Not at the same time, but one by one. But here's the thing about this one, yeah? Yeah. I had the DMX Ringo Rough Riders. Come bro, on, bro, when you worked out the one DA, I didn't work it out. Someone said it. They said it of course, bro. But still, yeah. worked out. God bless him. And when your phone rings and it's dun dun dun, dun people just want, people just look at you. What? That you? Ah. Yeah, man. Those were the days, man. Bro, did you ever clock back then about sending SMSs for free online? Like you yeah, could put someone's you could, number in and you could text them from. You could do it from Excite, from um, from Excite emails and shit like that. There was like send a text. Bro, I used to live in so Canada doing it, so I used to send back to Texas to London because I couldn't text on my phone. Mad. Did you know? But what about when one to one was down? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> when one to one's down, free calls, free calls, free calls, free calls. You start calling Nigeria. <laughs> Where you go? Oh. Oh, they were like savages. Serious one to one. Hey, you man, one to one's down. What's what? Make your calls. <laughs> bro, the way everyone would say, people oh. say it like it's carnival, bro. Being poor, yeah, is beautiful in the sense where you always think of other people. Because you don't think to yourself, oh shit, one to one's down. Let me keep this to myself. You tell nah. everybody. All the, the, the clout is way more important. Than way more important. Call. You just tell everyone, hey, one to one's down, make free calls. Bro, did you ever know da, about da, the time da, where you da, could da. Oh. call someone directly to their voicemail box? Yes. And so you basically just communicate yeah, by yeah, sending yeah, yeah, them yeah, your yeah, voicemail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, remember that. Remember when you could change someone's voicemail box and, and listen to their messages? Because you know, it's a phone number. So you put someone's phone number in. My time, Because I worked in a phone shop. My time someone said, oh, my, I can't get my voicemail. Go into their voice box. It's a different number. Just change it around. There you go. What happened? Someone changed your voicemail number. Who? Someone is trying to find your voice messages. So yeah. Wow. There was that. There was um five day pass. Of course, of course. Um I think that, I'd was, that was that was that, that was actually way way into the game. Yeah. Phones have been standard by that point. Yeah, yeah. But um I think I'd already left by that point. Or one to one? Yeah, yeah. So who who are you with now? O two. Are you with O two? Yeah, yeah. I've been with O two since I was like sixteen. I've been with that them times you tell EE when you're upgrading. You know, I've been with you since I was a kid. Like, bitch, you get five pounds off. Man. That's all we're we, we giving you. <laughs> People used to try and run game, just threaten to leave, and they'll offer you the best deal. Yeah. Mm. But you can do that with Sky, though, bro. You know, the funny thing, though, yeah? The thing is this, yeah? What you don't understand is loyalty deals, yeah, are... Um, Proof that you've been scabbed the whole time, bro. That you've been overcharged. The whole time. If, they can, if they can give you a service for free for three bucks, it's not costing them anything. Sometimes, yeah. Because people used to, um, in my... They had saber deals. It's like you know, it's a dirty game. When I was working in the phone in the phone industry, phone industry. When I was working in the car phone warehouse, they had people that used to sell phones in it. Yeah. And if you're a top seller, you could be clearing three grand a month. Okay. When they announced Talk Talk, car phone warehouse created Talk Talk. They were the first ones to announce free broadband. By the time those people were finished taking the calls and making their money, yeah, them were telling me we're buying cars. Mad. Because it was ten pounds if you close a sale for Talk Talk, and people were calling begging for Talk Talk. Because what? Well, because of what? Free broadband. But what do you think happens? What the, the prices go up? No, no, no. Within two months, saying everyone's like this. If I see Talk Talk on road, it's gonna be a <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be some furniture moving. Yeah, that because free broadband wasn't popping. They put on. <laughs> they put on too many people. They couldn't handle it. Nuts. And so it started being really bad, which drove it to the ground. So when I started working at Car Phone Warehouse, we're, we're doing this new um deal with our phones where you can get talk. I don't talk talk. All right, my bad. Like it'd been so um, damaged because of its the, the over. Do you know what I mean? They took on too many customers, and it was a new yeah. thing. It reminds me of another business story I had about KFC. They tried to give out. Don't throw any shade on KFC, bro. They fr- gave out free chicken. Um, using the oprah show they did a deal with oprah winfrey show it's bro shameless you know they're like who's gonna get more people in to buy chicken but you know the maddest thing though they gave it to oprah bro oprah i don't think sent- black people watch black women watch oprah as much as white women do though because her audience is her audience normally is white so it's interesting either way they- if you really want the black market they should have gone to Mont- um to you know them <laughs> maury yeah them- <laughs> <laughs> 
that's the truth, though. Uh, when you think about it, who do you think black people watch more? Oprah or Maury? Uh, and it's not because oh, it's not, not it's because oh, Maury appeal. He shows you your people. Uh, yeah. In, in that sense, he appeals to that. It's like this: if I wanted to get the black market in America, yeah. I have to go on Breakfast Club. Me going yeah. on Leno and all of that, I'm not gonna get those people. Yeah, I'll get a you know a bigger audience and a yeah. da, 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 da. but if I really want that hood, I gotta yeah. go Breakfast Club. Pause. I, I think Leno is probably a bad example because he's white as well. But like, I think a good example would probably be like the guy Byron Allen, the guy that does comics Unleashed. So he's black, <laughs> but it's not gonna get you that. It's not gonna, you're not gonna see with um, Chappelle with that earthquake moment where it was like the champs is here. You're not <laughs> yeah. gonna see that. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So you're right. So, yeah. but yeah, man, they, basically they, they they miscalculated. They got way too much uptake on on the free chicken deal. Oh, so black people did watch Oprah that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? We didn't even watch the show. We <laughs> just had <laughs> word. You know what it is? It was like when one two one was down. People called it right. It's free <laughs> chicken. <laughs> it's free chicken. Because I know black people didn't watch the episode. I know that because the room the word would have traveled so quick. <laughs> And here's the thing. It's not because black people love chicken. <laughs> Anything love that is free. We love our wolf. Anybody. <laughs> anybody. When you say free, yeah. everybody acts out of character. Yeah. They they severely over uh, un, uh, miscalculated. And basically, like, even real paying customers who showed up couldn't find any chicken. They, like, they ran out. They just, everywhere just, there were lines around the block and so on. For poor, chicken. Poor, yeah, for chicken. I man. would never queue for these things. Bro. Take advantage, absolutely. But I would never queue for these things. I, I've waited in a small four-man queue for a free Krispy Kreme donut. Oh, come on. A small what? Krispy Kreme. How was, long was the queue? Four men. Four men's fine. Yeah. You said around the block. Yeah, those ones around the block. <laughs> four men, I can understand. Yeah. You're almost there. Uh, funny, all these interesting stories. Funny you mentioned Krispy Kreme. I used to work in Harrods. Yeah. When they were trying to break Krispy Kreme. Okay. So they were giving us free donuts every week, every day. Bruh. In the Krispy Kreme department. We were Bruh. like, what is this? It's all Krispy Kreme. Again. Add it again. It's free donuts. Everybody. <laughs> Shoom. <laughs> by the time you got there, bro, by the way, yeah, bro. when it first started, when it was first hot, they'd give me two boxes because they were trying bro. to plug it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we, we were, were just it, like... At the time they were trying to plug it, we were doing that in business studies. Yeah. So I had like learned about how it started in America, yeah. how it got popular. Yeah. And then the fact By the way, it was just the ring glazed donuts. Yeah. By the way, I knew it was crack cocaine immediately. It was crack, bro. Yeah, because I almost finished the box. It has to bo- be crack. I had to, I had to tap myself, yo, 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 you're about to finish the box. Uh, bro, <laughs> that... Yo, Take at uni, home. yeah. So oh. I took them home, yeah. My family Ooh. obviously descend on it. And what's this? Krispy Kreme? I don't know. That's what, what donuts, it's donuts, isn't it? Bro. But again, I was right there when they were trying to break it. Now, Krispy Kreme is, Krispy Kreme is too expensive, though. And the donuts are too it sweet. Yeah, it, it's shameless now. And oh, my God. But, bro, did you know about, like, how in America they have the light? And once they turn the light on, that means the, the donuts just came fresh out of the oven. America, dude. Bro, that's so what I'm saying. Much. Bro. Call a nigga doing this at the table. Bro, <laughs> and, you know, we were so mad about it. If you know, like, um, Pavlov's dog, this this whole, like, psychological experiment thing, when they see something's Pavlovian, the idea that, like, he trained his dog to respond to the sound of a bell. Is that the same thing with HMV? What? Yeah, you know, his master's voice. Not the same dog? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not it's the, the same, same dog, dog from Frasier. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> oh, it's not the church with dog. Okay, okay, okay. Nah. So uh, this Pavlov's doctor, it was like that. So the idea was people would be driving around doing their everyday normal thing, but there's a specific light that when crispy, if you drive past the crispy creams and you know that light is on, that means that these donuts have just come fresh out of the oven. You 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 people are saying you ease to try and enter wow. that that crispy cream and get some fresh donuts. That's if you like um donuts that much though. <laughs> come on, man. you know what? You're talking about America, I, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only time I eat donuts is for a sugar rush. Yeah, and I need I a use... real sugar rush. Yeah. I eat a donut. Because so, they give you such a sugar rush. You're telling me, bro. Cause, and the, last time I ate What's your favorite Krispy Kreme donut? Mine just is the, 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 the glazed one, you know. Yeah, it's regular. Oh, regular my, glazed one. I, I run away. Because, yeah. you know, it melts in your mouth. Bro. One time, I ain't even lying to you. It was melting and it was talking to me. What did it say? It was caressing my lips. What did it say, though? It say, I said, I know you'd want me. <laughs> I know you want me. Like in magic. <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> Bro, you, you sound exactly like a uh, Pookie in the New Jack City. It was calling me. <laughs> Remember when Chris Rock said, you know, if they told you crack was in Krispy Kreme, you'd be like, I knew something I was, knew something was in there. <laughs> I, I knew, knew something was 
Facts. Big facts, man. Big facts. Because they're too, fact. they're just too nice. But you know, I'm not a sweet person. I mean, like, what's the word? Yeah, I'm not a sweet tooth. Yeah, you don't I have a sweet tooth. I went to a crep with crepery. my friend. Yes. Is it a crepery? That's the place where they make crepes, yeah. So it's not a crepe. No, the crepe is the thing. <laughs> okay, so I went to a crepery. Yeah. I, that's not a thing. I went to a place where they sell crepes. <laughs> or ice creams and all of that. And it was my friend's birthday, and I got really, I don't know why I got excited with it. Mm. Took three different flavors of ice cream, wrapped in the little thing. Hey, bro, First calm of all, down. it was too cold. And that was me. Can you warm it? <laughs> can you warm it? Can you put some road on, please? Some stew? But I, needed, I needed a kick. It was too cold. Yeah, bro. You did too much with that, bro. I did Sim- too much simple in Simple crepes. You just need strawberries and Nutella, bro. Okay. Ah, it's a win. Ah, strawberries and chocolate. I'm not a waffles and, a and, and, and chicken either type person. You're not. Okay. My cousins are from Belgium. They be bringing waffles every time they come. Through. Nah, that's the wrong kind of waffle. Not Belgian Belgium waffles. waffles. Nah, nigga. It's the like the chicken and waffles came from like uh, LA. Oh no 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 no. So I just it's, mean it's the um. It's but the Belgian waffles mixture. are good though, right? Belgian waffles are cool, but they're not supposed to be for chicken and waffles. I was just making that up though. Okay. Because more time if it's bank if it's Belgian waffles it's ice cream. Yeah, but that's, they put little clumps of sugar in in their ones, and it's much harder. Um, but the 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 mix is that what they're known for? Don't disrespect what they're known for. No, but I'm saying Belgian waffles. They're cool. Then they're, they're all right in that lane. But not for chicken and waffles. But not for chicken and waffles. Have you, been, no. have you had duck and waffles? Uh, no, I've not been to duck and waffle. I've not been there either. I just uh, it's one of those places that you take when you don't have guaranteed pumps at home. Um, so pumps at home. Yeah, it's for guys that are trying to impress girls. Take them to duck and waffle to impress a girl. <sighs> that's why I, I mean, usually I've, 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 it opens to like five in the morning people go there to watch the sunrise yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. what you do for your birthday Um, so missus made me breakfast and then took me to this place where we went shooting which uh, shot air, air rifles wicked and then uh, where's that had dinner in the evening bloody hell you it's had a Camden. good day oh, I had a fantastic day fantastic I'm your girlfriend day. man this is some bullshit <laughs> actually let me let me rephrase that let me t- edit that out <laughs> Because it went like I wasn't without girls for the whole weekend. Oh, my is, okay. My point is... um, Mine was getting that birthday. No, no, no. A couple of friends came out to watch. My friend came to watch me perform on Thursday. Okay. Actually, friends came the whole weekend. But um, after, I think she missed my set. Or she got the last moment of my set. And I was close to the first half. By the way, shout out to all the comics. Oh, I you. Why am running so much? Give you a little break so you can edit that out. This guy. I'm not I'm not By the way, I'm shout out to all the comics. Ah, uh-uh. shout out to all the comics. Andy Askins, Tom Hooten, uh, Joe Caulfield, Felicity Ward. Uh, Andy Askins' daughter is doing comedy. Okay, she's going by Kate Williams. So I'm assuming Ka- Andy Askins is not his real name. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. All right, Andy Askins is funny. She's going by Kate that. Williams. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Andy Askins. Can you imagine funny. you're looking for a Cat Williams video? And you end up on Kate Williams. <laughs> She is funny, so I won't mind. <laughs> but Andy um, is hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, He's, he's got this line. He says, you know, I'm actually a very good person. Back home in my stiff day, I do voluntary work. I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I love him, man. He's so understated, understated but he's got it. He's got it flip, to He's timing, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tom Hooten, you know, he was really good. It was nice yeah. watching him. And Laura Lex was comparing. Laura Lex is a really good comparing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a guy in the That's front. a solid bill right there. Joe mm. Caulfield is down as well. Joe Caulfield was funny, man. Yeah. She said, um, you know, her friend was like, I can't believe you don't know Stormzy. I can't believe you know. This is a, I haven't kept up. Nas told me hip hop was dead in 2005. I took his word for it. Is that what she said? <laughs> I'm a nah, nah, I'm said. done. When she said that, I said, hey, Joe, when you said that, I was I was nah. like, they don't even know what you're saying I'm right telling now. you, it, people wouldn't even really appreciate it. went over her. She was like, oh, did you get it? I was like, yeah. She's like, okay, okay. So I'm cool. Nas told me hip hop was dead. In 2005, I took his word for it. I took I his was word for it. Up. Oh, so you know she went on Wikipedia to check like <laughs> Nas discography, hip hop. Oh, you know dead. it must have been like she. I don't know why she wrote the joke. Yeah, but she said, you know, she, this is what the line that killed me the most for her whole set. What she said, she was talking about lockdown. Yeah. She goes, you know, these people as well. These people that that were annoying during lockdown. These people, people who use their time wisely. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, I was man. like, you know, I was sitting the whole time watching comedy because I've not been able to watch comedy yeah. in a while. Yeah. And, you know, some, the store is an ideal place because you get a seat and yeah. you feel like you're in your house. Let me not lie. You know, you can even sit in the booth like you're some 
like, like you the tech. door. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, uh, turn up the treble on her. <laughs> yeah. Or, or you're like, yeah. You're laughing with Simon in the back, you know. Yeah. Big up to Simon too, man. Bless. I know the security, man. Everyone was blessed to see everyone. Yeah. I'd have been in a year and a half, bro. Mad. And I was performing on my birthday. I was so nervous. Mad. And everyone had done so well. Yeah. And you don't want to let the team down. Of course. I'm now sitting at the back. Just mm. really enjoying yeah. people tell jokes. Yeah, bro. Like, okay, I, I like telling jokes. You have to go back to the basics, you bro. You do, you do, you do. You, you have to understand, you know. Um, and do you know what it is as well? Do you know you probably needed that? That you needed that testosterone boost just to remind yourself, I, I can kill these rooms, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes when you something like the store, I mean, you're past it now because obviously you've played the store many times. But you see what you felt I'm that again that build up. This guy, bro. <laughs> Go on. that build up that you felt, and then like slaying it, which I'm sure you did, it's needed, bro. You need that. Your brain chemistry needs that. That overcoming of a challenge that's been presented before you. Uh, I did four shows, four four shows, three days. Come on, the Thursday, my yeah. birthday was the my one. My birthday too. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the one. Yeah. In fact, it was so good. Yeah, I thought Friday the next day was Saturday. <laughs> Business my whole up. day was fucked up because remember when you do a night show at the comedy store yeah. you're in a basement of course and it was sold it was really busy yeah oh snap right so it felt like a weekend gig okay so the whole f- and then after I went with my friends to this place called Balance in Soho okay they did 24 hour breakfast dog we had a, we had breakfast at 11.30 at night oh you boiling like I, that and by the way the breakfast was banging okay and you know what everybody I hate you say it's called Balance Balance yeah Okay. I hate England. Yeah. You know? But I, but love, I love this country, man. <laughs> I love London, man. The vibe, yeah. man. Everybody was out. You could tell we ain't been out in a minute. People just yeah. on the street, eating outside. We went inside. Yeah. The first one we went to, there's two There's two of them. What, the first one didn't do 24-hour um, um, breakfast. I said, well, we can't stay. <laughs> but yeah, as we, yeah. were, we were sitting on the table here. It was me and... Um, Why did you want breakfast so much? But you know what the thing is? When you hear you can get 24 hour breakfast at a place, you want breakfast. <laughs> yeah, I you get just, that. I, yeah, get I that. want the breakfast. Of course. Especially as this build that's 24 hour breakfast. It feels so naughty right, as well. Like, gonna, let me get you. all my. And you know what, yeah? There you eat breakfast. There's never the a bad time for a full English, but we'll get to that. Yeah. But what's sitting at the table here was my friend and her friend. And there was this, this other two men here yeah. and these two women over here. Yeah. Now, I think the guy was gay. Because he looked very pretty. He had his hair down. He was looking in his mirror. He was talking to his friend. But the way the two other ladies were looking at him. And it wow. weren't subtles. They were just literally. Wow. So I was like, shoot your shot. <laughs> this guy, you in your element. <laughs> I was in my, it was my real birthday. Yeah. I just come off stage. Yeah. I was on a hype. Yeah. So we left that one. So I asked the, the, the waiter, is this 25 hour breakfast? He goes, no, not this one, the other one. I said, you don't mind if we leave, do you? <laughs> I don't know why people feel like feel bad for leaving. I don't know. I yeah. was like, peace. So I went to the, we went to the other one. It was really nice. The food was, the bre- my friends were counting calories. They, they're, they're trying to get their best bodies. I didn't have no issues with that. I'm trying to get this gut even bigger. This guy. I, I felt for them because, oh my God, they couldn't eat anything. Bruh, I'm even trying to watch my diet just because of the gout. But yeah, I feel their pain. You man. know what? I feel like <laughs> the abuse of your body is, is a beautiful journey. This guy, it how is. Are you gonna turn it this is. One and this around? is what people don't. People, people don't. People don't enjoy funk. You know, they they sit in their funk. You know, you order. I hate people that will order six wings and chips and a coke and be like, you know, I don't. I don't usually eat like this, bro. We know you do this twice a week. <laughs> Why are you lying to yourself? Yeah, bro. I this get is you. where I I'm at. Man. I get you. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah. But I want to improve. Okay. At my own pace, at my own time, and then I will. Because mm-hmm. what people do is you go from. You try and do the whole cold turkey thing. Yeah. But you break so quickly because you don't know why you're doing this. Mm. But if you appreciate the fact that this is your body, this is who you are. Yeah. Um, yes, it's it's beautiful to look like Tupac, Tyrese, abs coming out your teeth and all of that. It's amazing. But you have to understand one key thing. Variety is the spice of life. We're not all supposed to have abs. Some of us are supposed to look, have, you know, Irregular bodies. No, not regular bodies. Because she was telling me, you know, men like natural bodies. This is me. Which body is... Na- what's a natural body? What is a natural body? And she said flat stomach, you know, shape. This, that's not a natural body. That's just something you were blessed with. Because a woman who has, you know, a bit more thicker thighs, that's a natural body. Not everyone is mm-hmm. stick fit slim. 
people are different shapes and sizes. People are different shapes. And yeah. Sizes, yes. But they're, 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 I think, well, it, what I thought of when she said natural body is like not surgically enhanced and that kind of no, thing. No, no. That's, that's part of it. But yeah. she meant <clears throat> fit body. Okay. Fit body. Men but, like a know, fit body. But also, there, there is a certain amount to which we don't actually know what our bodies are supposed to look like anymore because we're eating all sorts of stuff that we were never supposed to eat. You think God put Krispy Kreme donuts to yeah. grow out the ground on this, yeah. on this earth? Yeah. No. He didn't, but he made the, the, the brains to make Krispy Kreme donuts. Yeah, but that's not what we were supposed to do. We're not that. supposed to. Who knows what we're supposed to? We weren't supposed to flipping have clothes. Who gives a shit? Uh, we can see what these things do to our body, though. What? Can you see what clothes does to our, to our population? For every Gucci shirt you wear, there's an Indian kid and um, there's a there's a Chinese kid that can't speak English sewing your shirt. Why did he speak exactly. English? Exactly. Why did he speak English though? But all I'm saying is this: <laughs> for everything that you say, oh, we're not supposed to eat this. We're not supposed yeah. to do a lot of things. Let it happen. You think we're supposed to play PlayStation? Hold on. You think we're supposed to work nine to five to the point where we can't see our families and we're all telling Graham committing suicide? Hell no, hell no. Exactly. So here's what it is. Some people are supposed to work longer. Some people are supposed to work less. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Some people, Facts. Some people's wives are like, "Why can't Facts. you do a nine to nine? Like, Facts. Yeah. But some people know. were meant to have abs, and some people were gonna have that gut. Yeah, of course, of course. That's always. If they didn't be. have the gut, we would never have the song. I love it when they call me Big Papa. Yeah, obviously. I mean, you we're know. looking at it from the wrong angle sometimes. <laughs> so, so what you saying? Some some people just got to take diabetes for the I, team. <laughs> you gotta you gotta take weight for the team. Bruh. Big Papa, no. What have you seen, Heavy D? Heavy D. If they, if Heavy D was a slim thing, what would he, what, what would he was tracks been? Slim D. <laughs> Pause. Oh, by the way, which one? What well, Heavy D? <laughs> we just say Heavy D, like yo. What you doing? Listen to that Heavy D, yo. Whoa, pause. <laughs> heavy D, you know. <laughs> oh no, he was lucky. He's, it's not his time in it. I know. No, you couldn't call yourself. Um, I'm gonna come out. What's your name, dog? Heavy D. We're gonna have to change that. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're trying to appeal to the Lil Nas market. <laughs> oh, I mean... Did you see the Lil Nas BT thing? No. He was it? kissing the, the men. Uh, I, th- I think I might have seen that on social media. Here's the thing, yeah. Skimmed right past that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not tripping. You know why? Because it's the same MTV or BET that made me watch Madonna, Britney Spears, and Christian Aguilera kiss. And if you're cool with that, you got to watch Lil Nas S kiss this man. To, you don't have to do that, yet, bro. Hmm? You don't have to do that. You could, you could quite easily say, I like this one. I don't like this one. And this this sort of I don't understand why people f- put this unnecessary pressure on you to be like morally consistent in this area because the truth is, like for most heterosexual guys, the idea of two women kissing is a turn on. The idea of two guys kissing turn off. That's so just the, fine. That's the, how it is. The idea of if you're um, doing it, if you're if you're actually no morally consistent, I get your so point. So the idea of kissing and Theresa May kissing is appealing. No. Oh, two hot say, women. Say, oh, two hot women. Yeah. Wow, this is shallow. It's real. What do you Shame mean shallow? And this is why I could never be gay, because men are trash. <laughs> 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 hey, bro, these quotes are coming. I was about to say, they're coming in thick and fast. But even that's like, hey, pause. That's pause. <laughs> Especially in this oh. line of conversation, though. Oh, my god. But goodness. that's why I could never be gay, because men are trash. That's the routine I was working on. Like I could never be gay because men are tra- the way women talk about men. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep rolling my dice with these women. <laughs> nah, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, man. By all means, bro. Be Do you honest know what? With it's yourself. hard. It's hard. To, yeah, you know, and it's hard. But morally, you know morally, what? you're yeah. right. Morally, yes, you can't, you can't yes, be like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. my goodness, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is a destruction complain, of yeah, our complain, society. Yeah. And then over here, you're like. <laughs> Yeah, but this is okay though. This is fine. It's like Morally, when, you can't do when that. Cardi B in the pool warehouse pussy. Are, oh, well, I had people my age. What's the world coming to? I was like, bro, we listen to oil ladies pop your pussy like this. Do you know what he said? It was different. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what, you, what? I had to check myself because I was like, I used to listen to Uchi Wally, but at least I knew that Uchi Wally was Uchi wrong. Wally. That was disgusting, Snoop bro. Snoop said, as the sun goes down and my game goes bigger, how many bitches want to fuck this nigga named Snoop? That's that's even minor, bro. Listen to Uchi Wally again, bro. Uchi not hard. What do you mean? I've heard worse than Uchi Wally. Uchi Wally Wally? What's that when it comes to sex? What? No, little young thing. Go around my... With your tongue rig. Okay. Deep from my nine is Got from the have front and grab from the side and from your hand. Have you had Black Pussy by DJ Quick? Oh, no, bro, we don't have to, oh, by the way, we don't by have way, to go by deeper deep into the gutter, way, bro. By the way, the music video was between a, was between a vagina. I said this. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know? Oh, oh, what was that? Why, why didn't you ever see the video? <laughs> you ever heard of MTV After Dark? Of course, bro. That shit coming at two in the morning. Triple X U as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of yeah. them were doing these triple, you know, these triple X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black Pussy bro, was the you... album. By the way, in this world where they say we don't protect black women, it was homage to Black Pussy. I mean, it depends how you want to look at it. There's a woke way of looking at it. Like, because one girl came posted out on one, her Instagram so... saying, she posted a picture of a black vagina, whatever. And she said she wanted a... Uh, uh, on Instagram? Not not her vagina, but a vagina. You could just post like a... A picture, a drawing, yeah. A drawing, Yeah, okay. a drawing. And she said she wanted a vagina that represented hers. So it was a representation thing. And I said, we down to, we down to vaginas now, nigga. <laughs> Hey, y'all need a cause so bad. Oh What's my god, on? we need a cause so bad, man. We need Bro. a cause so bad. There was one time I can't remember. There was one female friend that the um, MTV base after dark thing came up, and she just went, uh, "See popping, popping on the handstand." I, was like, I looked at her like, "You are watching this Did too." You, ain't no fun by Snoop. Ain't no fun if no, no. miss can. You could never sing that song today. That um, Nate Dog, when I met you last night, baby. I don't know that song. Before you opened up your gap. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You see him? I had respect for your lady. But now I take it all back. <laughs> Listen. Because you gave me all your pussy. No way. Wait. And you even lick my balls. By the way, this is Nate singing it. So it's a true Nate. Then he goes, leave your number on the cab, Nate. And I promise, baby, I'll give you a call. Next time I'm feeling kind of hot, Nate. <laughs> no. Come on over and I'll break you off. It gets worse. And if you can't fuck that day, baby, just lay back and open your mouth. <laughs> And if you harmonize, cause I have Nate never did. met a girl. Nate it was that. such a violent, not violent, but aggressive put down bitches song. Corrupt comes in straight. If corrupt give a fuck about a <laughs> oh, bitch, no, I'll corrupt. always be broke. <laughs> corrupt, spits, corrupt. corrupt spits bars on top of it. <laughs> no, and that's that's you know, when I go play, ain't no fun if the homies can't have no big tune. Big tune, but the lyrics oh, were. When I see the lyrics, I'm to shocking. myself, if you play this today, cancelled. Oh, finished. Finished. Cancelled. Can you imagine Nate Dogg gets to heaven now? God's like, hey, run that song back <laughs> one more time. Let me, let me hear he how gave, that song went. He gave his life to Christ and did the gospel album. Too. Oh, really? He oh, did okay. The gospel album. I didn't know Nate did the gospel yeah, album. Yeah, he was trying to do that whole gospel thing. Oh, no, the gospel was a bag, though, isn't it? it yeah, Still unfortunately. Did the gospel album. I mean, I think I had KC in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think he's even been in church in years. My goodness. Oh, so that's what it was. So, so, so you know, in, in terms of Warehouse Pussy, we've, it's been coming, man. I know, you know, I know more. She played me a song from the 1920s. I said, and it was one of those, Gini, Gini, back, Gini, fuck me, sack, baby, come on. You know, those old yeah. Plaquen on the records. Yeah. It was filthy. Yeah, there was lots of filthy stuff back then. Mm. Your mom's Maybelline was telling Oof. dirty ass jokes Oof. back then. Dirty ass jokes. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so funny because I do think it, it, oh, I think I remember one of them. Jack and Jill went up the hill. Um each of them had a quarter. Um Oh, I can't Oh, it's just annoying me. I can't remember the Oh, but, but anyway, I'm not going to ruin the joke. But basically, it was a Jack and Jill went up the hill kind of joke. And basically, the, the point is that Jill comes down with all the money because she basically sucked Jack off. Okay. Like, that was the point of the joke. Okay. I've like, ruined it now for you. But like she these are the kind of jokes they were telling on stage. childhood. Pardon? Dolomite used to do that kind of shit. I think Dolomite was on... Um, I'm going to have to I research I doubt you would heard um, what's his name's album, The Chronic. But Dr. J's first album, The Chronic. Yeah, I've heard it before. I don't. There's a skit I've only obviously there. listened to 2001. Probably. I think it's Dolomite. There's a skit on there, or blow, blue, blow, blow talk. one of those LA niggas that talks like that, and he's like, um, my, his daughter came up to me and said, "Dad, if I had some <laughs> nuts on my chest, would they be chestnuts?" He goes, "Yes. If I had some nuts on my um, drawers, would they be chestnuts?" He's like, "Draw nuts, not is yeah. If I had some nuts on my um, um, under my chin, would they be chin?" He goes, "Hell no, bitch! You have a dick in your mouth." <laughs> <laughs> but the way the jokes were just so raunchy and raw from yeah. zero to a hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, to be honest, there is no, there's no doubt about it that it's like it's not like this generation was when, um, it all went left. It all went left just like that. No. It, it's it's been happening for a while, but at the same time, time though, there's gonna be someone listening to a song and saying, when we were coming, up, we were just wet ass pussy. <laughs> it's true, you know. It's true. I want you to hit that big Mac truck running this back of the garage. It's just like woof. Yeah, I mean to be honest, I think there is something happening now that's kind of more and more mainstreaming it uh, because there was still an element that this was naughty before, and now it's just becoming more and more like empowerment. It's the narrative around it has changed, and I think it is empowerment. Yeah, because when you listen to Uchiwali, no one was saying these girls are empowered. Uchiwali is not a girl song though. It's nice. Yeah, but even when she was doing my neck, my back, it was a raunchy song, yeah. but it wasn't like. This is empowerment. Empowerment. Mm-hmm. The idea that now no it's scrubs em- was empowerment. Or my yeah. independent was no power empowerment. But this is just the other side. I don't see how this. I don't see any how any of these songs empower women. I don't see. Have you ever felt way. empowered by anything like like a song to empower black people or something like that? Have you ever felt that that you've been empowered by the fact that someone shouted out black people? You know, Black Men United, for instance. Do you feel empowered or do you just feel inspired? I don't know. Imp- yeah, I think it, that empowerment narrative is probably oversold. Oversold, yes. I think I think the true the times where I have felt empowered as a black person, but that's usually because somebody has had direct impact in my life. Like ah. they've mentored me, okay. they've provided me with funding to go and do something, okay. or whatever it is. You've empowered me because you've mm-hmm. given me mm-hmm. the power resources to, go and to do, do something. Absolutely. Exactly. But the fact that you like made a song to empower me, I haven't really felt that empowerment. I think that that's usually more directed towards women because I, I I genuinely think that for men to empower a man is to is to give him the tools he needs to overcome a problem mm. and I think w- when you're empowering women it's to make them overcome any kind of emotional or feeling that they may have of being restricted or not being supported and to give them that emotional uh, support and boost is enough to make them feel empowered. So I think if you understand what empowerment looks like to people, then you can understand why that's empowering to... Like doing a song that says you're beautiful and mm-hmm, that your body mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. good the way it is mm-hmm. can be empowering to a woman. Mm-hmm. If somebody says to me, your body is beautiful the way it is, I don't feel empowered. I feel like you're giving me a consolation prize because <laughs> I can see so what my body looks like. You don't like, King already, already, you know it. King already, already, you know you don't back, no? You don't sing that thing. I'm a king for real. Nah, I've never listened to. I remember one time my friend was like to me, you know, I want them to teach Black History in school, because I was like, oh why? She was like, I want them to know that we were kings and queens. I said, not all of you were. Facts, bro. <laughs> some of you were slaves, bro. Some of y'all. You want to trace that lineage? My fucker ended up in the wrong place. Can you imagine? Can you imagine saying that? Like, <laughs> you know, you know, your family came up off of slavery, you know. <laughs> Like if slavery imagine didn't your, happen, imagine your family was the one instigating the 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 the, the, the slaves. Bruh, I've often wondered that though. Isn't that like if you if 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 you're if you're like Nigerian now, right? And that means somewhere along the line, your family kind of like sold another family or got away. I don't I know how it. much of that narrative is real. I don't know because I don't know because there was no there was no Nigeria then. Okay, but if you're Yoruba, for example, Yoruba and you know that I think I don't think Yoruba was 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 taking the slaves. To be fair. They were hundred percent. You think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they, that's why they speak Yoruba in Brazil and and across oh, yes. the. What am I? What am I talking about? Yeah, but isn't that because? Um, and you know, Yoruba wasn't obviously like a united tribe. We isn't would that have because of um. Didn't they take their gods over there though? Yeah, I mean, Yorubas took all sorts with them when they went. Yeah, but what? They didn't go as slaves, though, did they? Yoruba were they slaves? slaves? Yeah, probably. Yorubas went. Why else would they go to the South Americas? Yeah, I mean, uh, Yorubas are well represented across the slave trade. That West Africa horn, mm, pretty much most mm, tribes who live along mm, there have entered into mm. slave blood. But the, I think with y- Yorubas, it's like you can you can have like the Oba of uh, one town fighting against the Oba of another town. So if if you didn't end up in America, then it's like maybe yours got away. Maybe yours was just quiet living. You know, I mean, I don't understand the, 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 I don't know the ins and outs, but I do know, obviously, you know, for the, you see, the, 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 the kingdoms initially were doing it to beat each other up. Yeah, because the thing is, like, slavery back then was like, all right, you come, Business. you come work for me yeah. or whatever it is, or it's like a prisoner of war, you come yeah. and work over here. 
So if the white guys show up with gunpowder well. or whatever it is, and they say, look, we'll sell you, we'll sell you this for your for your slaves. You go, all right, fair trade. Like we've been selling and buying the slaves anyway. That's not a problem. They didn't and know about then, the transatlantic though. Do you know anything about the trans? You don't know what happens when they get over there. You don't know about mm. chattel slavery. You don't know that these guys don't have any rules or mm. any kind of uh, like humanity around this kind of thing. It's like a black market. Oh, sh- I didn't even say it like that. But it was like a black market before a black market. Pretty much, but yeah. It was like a black market, but that was very open. And only one side was getting cheated. I mean, pretty much. But after a while, it wasn't much of a market. Now it was like, we're not, uh, we're not, buying them from you anymore we're oh no no it became showing a, up or taking we're them. a slave company they, the queen <coughs> you know I yeah. remember I was like because you know when I was talking about how everybody prays for Nigeria whereas what they did in this country was they prayed for themselves they asked God for the blessing so okay so just go catch some Africans bro I mean it's a uh, it's a dirty game yo <laughs> bro did we did we finalize what the Tupac quote is it's from Smile. Okay. Which is a song featuring Scarface. Probably my favorite. You always be Tupac picking song. the the songs that I don't really be listening to like that. Well, maybe you should start listening. But no, maybe you should start picking from All Lies Zombie. Uh, uh That's not two parts. Are you still down? That's Remember me. Two parts. Which other album? To be fair, Smile was not on the album. But the song is a Smile from me, which is self explanatory. He wants you to smile. And, um, oh, really? <laughs> um, he says, um, selling my soul for material wishes, fast cars and bitches, wishing I live my life a legend, immortalized by pictures. Which is really weird that he said that. Because you used to download pictures of him as soon as you got on the internet. <laughs> Which is what he became. <laughs> Do you think so? Yeah. So he said, "I'm selling my soul for material wishes, fast cars and bitches, but wishing I live. I, I wish I live my life a legend, immortalized by pictures." But anyway, that's not the quote. But that's part of it. Then he said, "Why shed tears? Save your sympathy. My childhood years were spent burying my peers in the cemetery. Here's a message to the newborns waiting to breathe. If you believe, then you can achieve. Just look at me." Then it goes against all odds. The life is hard. We carry on living in the projects, broke with no lights on. This is the part that I wanted the quote to be. To all the to all the seas that follow me, protect your essence. Born with less, but you're still precious. Just smile for me now. Bro, you can't reuse quotes, bro. I've used that before. Yeah, man. That was like episode one. Episode one is called Protect Your Essence. Bro, that thing just hit me again this week, man. Golly. Hit this guy. This week, episode one of our podcast was to called protect, protect Your Essence is important though, man. It is. Bro, I was feeling that a, this week. We're going to need a different quote, bro. Okay, I'll change the quote. But I'm going to talk about why I was just feeling that this week because sometimes you just feel like, um, you know, when you come into the game, mm. you're so wide eyed. Of course, yeah, yeah. And anybody that throws you a titty, you're ready to suck. God, bro, why do you have to say it like that? And this? then you, it's Jason that gave me the analogy. It's not the first girl that gives you the boom that you need to smash, you know. I mean, that's like, yeah, fair that's, enough. That's very true. That's like, fair enough. Fair enough. Why is it always got to be so wrong? <laughs> because uh, sometimes you got to put it in layman terms for a nigga so it can sink in. Like when I tell people, people can only ride your dick when it's hard. It hits home. You can be like, oh my God, can you never... No, fam, because you need to understand what I'm trying to say in it. But the essence part is just a sense of the industry or the, 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 the journey sometimes makes you desperate. Okay. And then you start to think of things that would be out of your nature or your character. Yeah. Because you feel like I need to do this to get that. Okay. But it's important for you to remember the essence of you. Okay. Who you really are and why you really do this. Mm, And that will draw you back to that level playing field. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I was just feeling that a lot this weekend because, you know, I performed and just, you know, analyzing my birthday. And someone said to me, (laughs) someone said to me on, on Sunday, I just come off the bus. It's black guy from I was like, yeah, what's, what's going on, bro? Brav. Shook my hand. Like, you're the, one of the biggest comics in the game, you know. Keep doing your thing. And Man. immediately, all oh, like, imposter syndrome hit, hit me. And you need that big, bro. You, know? <laughs> you start putting the, com- the the compliment as low as you can. You know, I ain't really been on TV in a while, though. But I appreciate that. And that imposter was just kicking my ass the whole way. Yeah. I bro. 
So I just said to myself, you know what? Forget though. Just, just leave it. Just, just protect. Just, just, just be yourself. You don't have to worry about all that. But immediately, I wanted to tell him, no, 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 no. There's bigger comics, bro. <laughs> Save yourself. So it just really got me thinking bro. about that. But yeah, I know it's weird because I, I, I get that as well sometimes where somebody's like giving me real props, like, nah, man, original guys in the game, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And I'm like, I want to tell them, you, you know, I'm going to nine to five right now, you know, I'm not even really full time no more. Or like, you know, I feel like, you know, oh, maybe you should be, you should probably look over at this guy, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and to be honest, it's, it doesn't serve anybody to do that. It's like it's not real humility. Um, it's you're not you're not you're not achieving anything by by reducing yourself by reducing yourself in that way. Remember that? Have you seen that quote? From, but it um, feels it feels like it's the right thing to do because it's weird in our. I don't have you think seen Coach Carter? No, I haven't actually. There's a quote from them because our deepest. He was asking him, "What's your biggest? What's your greatest fear?" Yeah, he didn't know what to say the whole time. And then eventually he says this poem by this person. Our greatest fear is by my Angelo. I don't think it's my Angelo. How do you feel? Um, our greatest fear is that we're not inadequate. Is, th- is that we're not? Is th- it's not that we're inadequate, but we are greater than. Blah 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 blah. blah. Is that my Angelo? I don't think it's her. I'm pretty sure it's not her because I've got the quote on my wall. I used to have the quote on my wall. And I know my Angelo. She yes. quoted "Still I Rise." Marianne Williamson. Thank you very much. I knew it was my Angelo. Yeah. I thought I thought it was. Yeah, I thought I really thought it was my Angelou, but it's a good thing I checked. You just bring any deep cost my Angelou in that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the pool was there. My Angelou. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I watched bad rap in it. Okay. And this bad rapper was bad rapping. It was rap, bad rapping this guy. He was battling this guy. Yeah. One of my favorite bad rappers. His name is B Magic, and he was battling that guy. And he was like, "Are you gonna see this still? I rise like my Angelou." The whole room went. <laughs> so you're gonna see this still I, I rise, rise like Maya Angelou. Everyone was like this. What? Mad. To take to flip still to steal? Yeah. God! That's, oh, that's mad. That that's was bad wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love rap bars, man. When they heal it like that, you're like, all right, all right, all right, all right. You watch that um Deluxe versus Dipset? Nah, I don't watch Dark Stuff. I'm you don't sure. watch I don't watch prison prison. I don't watch prison <laughs> prison prison versus prison content. <laughs> No, no, no. I, was I just good. watched the clips from it. You know what? I was never a fan of either group. Okay, fair so play. I don't know their music. If yeah, it was Dog Pound versus Bone Thugs, I'd have been there. Dog Pound versus Bone Thugs? Boom, 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 boom. How have Bone Thugs not done the verses, blood? Because there's like three songs, bro. Well, Bone Thugs. That, three yeah. songs that you know. Yeah, Bone but they're going to like pop off like Bone that. Bone Thugs like... have 200 albums. No, no, no. Have you seen Bone Thugs following? It's crazy. You just Are don't you know serious? Bone Thugs. Yeah, you just don't know them. I know like 25 songs that will pop off. Do you say they got 200 albums? Yeah. There's no way they got 200 albums. <laughs> First of all, there's 200 of them. <laughs> Wait, what's going on here? Yeah, Who's Bone Bone Thugs? Thugs. You know Bone Thugs was signed to EZ on the Ruthless Records, right? Okay. And there was four of them, major them. Yeah. But there was a bag of them. But some of them were in prison. Some of them were out. Some of them that. Like So Solid. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought everyone from South was in So Solid. Yeah, bro. I was so in So Solid, solid at one point. So Solid crew, no. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I thought everyone from South was so solid crew. Bro, I but yeah, both dogs, so dogs have songs, bro. You just don't know. For you know that Ouija, are you with me? My murder, my murder, my murder, my midnight. Hey, Mr. It was always Ouija, on some deep, weird spirituality stuff. I know, man. The really? album, the album scared the shit out of me. I mean, my best like this. That's Who is horrible. Mr. Ouija? And it was like the, the was album cover. Board. You were supposed to like. The Salem curse was in the yeah, back. Yeah, you like go read it in the mirror. mirror yeah, I mean, it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you want to. But sell why? Why are they always? Why are they always messing it's called with that selling kind of records? Stuff? Are you, what is that made you want to go get the record? You like? Hey, it but sells they got records. Yeah. In the back, though. Oh, that's that. <laughs> it's true though. It sells records. It sell. Diddy put out who shot you? After Tupac had just got shot, then they said it was not this song to Tupac, but you knew Tupac had just got shot. Why would you put out who shot you at the same time? I mean, we know Diddy's a scumbag. In that it's not a scumbag, way. though. If you're a businessman, nah, by the way, yeah, it's a Biggie's business. sales had not been going up. We have this window of opportunity. You put our song called Who Shot You? The streets will talk. Of course. But what I'm saying is that, like, there are different angles that rappers have always mm. used, right? And the main obvious one is, like, I got a rep on these streets. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
But every so often, someone's like, yeah, but I really like Rock With The Devil once in a while. Yeah, because that's what gets you... Uh, what's his name? The son of Satan or the prince of the prince of evil. Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. I'm late, but I'm, he just used it to sell records. Same as uh, Marilyn Manson. Used it to sell records. These people are intelligent people. The next, Bone Thugs were actual demonic lyricists. Like, they could rap their ass off. But all we knew, all we were talking about was, you see the fire in their head? That's because they know Satan. Mm-hmm. No, but that's <laughs> the thing. I didn't even, I didn't even oh, care about What I'm saying that. is, that's what I we didn't didn't care in my about school. Bum, 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 bum. Like, they had jams, like Crossroads and, yeah. uh, and you know, First of the Month, of the month yeah. and so on. Those were the bangers that, like, made me want to listen to Bone. When I heard all this other stuff, I was like, what's all this? You know I, what? So maybe, I, maybe that's why. Maybe I spent too much time in the church. I don't listen but... to Crossroads. That's not even one of the bangers. Only first of the month. The rest of the bangers, there's Thuggy Shruggish Bone. Where they went it's the Thuggy Shruggish Bone. No, that's actually a bang as well. Those were the three that I had in mind when I said they got like three tunes. Uh, they, they were mad. The one it's with Biggie. The, the one with Biggie. You've heard the song with Biggie, right? Armed and dangerous. Ain't too many came bang with us. Straight up, we don't yes. dangerous. Yes, I did know that us one. Notorious. Diddy just couldn't get off the track. We forgive you for you don't know what you do. Diddy, you can't rap. Let, let the MCs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so funny when you see these youngsters listening to like reaction videos of Biggie and they'll be like, that Diddy in the back. <laughs> yeah. That Diddy in the back. I only know him as Diddy. So when they when, when Biggie says Puffy, did it like who's Puffy? They don't know who Puffy is. My goodness, I know, right? My goodness, it's like you know when you're dating a girl, you're like, so it's I was um, listening to Puffy the other day. Who's Puffy? We got to break up, baby girl. <laughs> That's a test for me. It's the thuggish raggy bone. She did the whole name. She did the whole name and check at the end. Did you see it? We got yeah. lazy and <laughs> crazy. <laughs> she goes easy now. Easy now. And she goes, and Tasha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she had to shut herself out. I ain't gonna get left off this record. <laughs> Definitely in the house. <laughs> you know the maddest story? What's that? Tupac went to Easy e to help him distribute his Thug Life album because Interscope wouldn't do it. They said it was too hardcore. So he went to Easy e because he felt like Easy e would understand. And Easy e rejected him and put out Bone Thugs. And Tupac wasn't happy about that. Wow. Yeah. You be you be hearing some stories sometime when you dig deep. You're like, Dad, I didn't know that. So how did who put the Thug Life album out then? Um, I think Interscope eventually did, but didn't do well. That was a good album, though. How long would they want me? I wish it would have been another. Nendo can sing anything, you know. How long would they mourn my brother? How long would they mourn me? <laughs> to be honest, Nate Dog can't sing anything. Anything. Any hook on oh, Nate no. Dog Anything. Bruh. That was my joke when he died. Oh, yeah, that joke for when Nate Dog died. This man, Nate Dog. When I heard Nate Dog, I was like, oh no. <laughs> no. Oh. That was funny, man. Bro. That was funny. I couldn't do it in the, in the comedy story. They just went over. Of course. But regulate, bro. That's Rowan G, though, man. Have you heard the original? No, right? no, be, let's be honest, though. Let's be honest, though. On on on, on regulate, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Nate, no, Warren G's like, I'm tweaking, like all of that. We love it. I'm tweaking on a whole new level. But Nate Dogg singing, I was just hit the East Side and the LBC, LBC on the Mission China Five. But you know what? Have you Warren, heard the original song? That's the what? As in, I keep forgetting. Bruh. We're not in I, love. I that makes more than the original, bro. Every time I. What? My, okay, Michael Things McDonald is, is already a G. Like, By the way, Michael McDonald must have been like this. A Warren who? <laughs> <laughs> he flipping my shit. Michael McDonald's already Who's a G. Who's the G though? Warren G or Michael McDonald? Because what's Warren G listening to that song for? I mean, No, but come on, man. Like The G-Funk era was all about taking these kind of oh, songs. Oh, yeah. And... Sample, but still, still, Michael McDonald, they were sampling the Funkadelics. And you know all the G funk people, the Funkadelics. But Michael, Mac- you know Michael McDonald was was. Come on, man! Okay, you, even okay. even the fact that you're still loving it till today. I don't know that I, song of him though. Okay, but the whole point is though that like there are certain times where even in the black community, even if there's a song that doesn't seem like it's for us, we all know it's a banger. What like? No way, no, 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 I I, I mean. Will be right here with, you know, I mean to be honest, like yeah, that that would be one of them. I was thinking more like. Um, Phil Collins in the year 
Like that song, like rappers just love that song. <laughs> That's a big song. Though. It's a big song. But is, is that, I don't think Phil Collins was like, hey, the black community go love this one. Why not? His whole style is black community. <laughs> but I'm saying, I don't think that's what his intention was, but it just uh, so happened Phil Collins. that like, like the rappers all love that song. He knew only he's going to feel this. <laughs> <laughs> he did, did he know that Tupac was going to do a version and DMX is going to do a version of that song? DMX a version, yeah, but it's yeah. sampling though, isn't it? No, no. DMX had like a whole song. I can feel it coming in the... On the first album. I did not know that. On Dark and Hell is Hot? Yeah. To be fair, I'm listening to it. It's Mickey. That's why I hit these motherfucking streets at night. Come on. Okay. I can feel I didn't it know. But there's something about that song, man. Remember the Cadbury advert with the gorilla? Yeah. That, I mean, obviously that, that drum solo is yeah, iconic. Man. But obviously that song hit something with people. To be fair, it's you, just if a you, when you listen to Staring at the World from wherever you won't. It's hard to pick up. Because they just take the guitar. Ding, 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 yeah. ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big tune. I was yeah, a big Phil Collins world, fan as a kid. Rear view. I was a big Phil Collins fan as a kid. To be fair, I grew up on British music a lot. So Cliff Richard. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of British trash. Carly Minogue. You don't call it trash, bro. If you liked it, just say it with your chest. I liked these songs. You don't have to like downplay it now. Some of them are trash, though. Like which ones? Which ones did you like that you now see are trash? Oh. <laughs> which ones I like? <laughs> ah! None of them, none of them. They're not trash. They're That's right. what I'm saying. They're, they're not pop. trash, bro. They're like, I, there's one jam that came on, on my on my shuffle the other day, and I was like, um, and I was like, this is actually a banger. Like, what? I don't feel any shame about letting people know I like all of these like obscure, well, obscure to them British songs. It's the, um, it's the the one where who's the group? Oh, I can't even remember. Everything just skipped my mind. It's basically the song where the guy um meets the girl and he he turns. He, he, he turns her life around and, and basically she's like, yeah, I'm done now. Deuces. And he's like, don't you want me, baby? Don't you want me? No. No. Yo, uh, you were working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. To be fair, no one knows the lyrics. You just wait for the, the song. I mean, I, I know the lyrics now, but like that, don't you want me, baby? That's just a banger. Like as far as I'm concerned, that's I not, like that song. Not, that's not a song you you listen to though. That's a song that comes on. I well, it comes on. on my, yeah. On, on what my I'm show. saying is, because I understand what you mean, but those songs yeah. are those come on songs. So it's like, yeah. um, don't you want me, baby? It's like, um, <laughs> you won't know this song, but there's 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 songs like um that were popular like. That he wants to come on, it's like a boy. It's like in song, in sync. Yeah. With um, every little thing I do, doesn't matter yeah. what you're listening to. That's yeah. a big tune. Bro, Backstreet's back is like is always gonna be a yeah, banger. I've heard it before. I've heard it recently. It's not the same. You have to literally be in an environment where they're playing and it wasn't that vibe. Oh, remember Backstreet? Yeah. If it comes up by itself, you're like, yeah, what is this? I'm not sure you though. Yeah, I don't. I was listening to. I watched the NSYNC story the other day. Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. They tell you, Lou Palmer. No, he's with like, their manager. He was a fraudster. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. These men were doing coming off of F, F money as well. Yeah, it's, it's not so, just rappers. Yeah, it's man. not just he rappers. Was a fraudster. He was running an airline company with no airlines, and then he heard about what boy bands were making. So I'm in the wrong business, so he decided to try and make a boy band, and so he made Backstreet Boys. But what he cleverly did was also making Sync, so that they'd have a rivalry, right? And Backstreet Boys didn't like it. Maybe they didn't Sync. But then Backstreet Boys were killing it. And then they had this Disney performance. And they were just tired. And they're like, look, we're just going to turn it down. So they needed someone else. He's clever. Let NSYNC do it. NSYNC, and even the publicity, they would do anything. They did the show. My goodness. You know where Chris Rock said sometimes, where, 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 where white people can be average, black people have to be exceptional. Yeah. It, that, 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 that was Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. They yeah. worked very hard. Yeah, they rehearsed yeah. their, uh, their asses off. Yeah. But they were very average talent-wise. Okay. But they took off because the boy band sensation went mad. Yeah. <clears throat> he, they would rehearse all day. He would fly them to you know, hotels and stuff like that. They started... After that Disney performance they did, they killed it. They started killing it. Everybody's looking for in sync. Mm. Boom. The photo shop, the photo shoots. Oh, my God. But they had to be skinny, have abs so they can sell the magazines. Girls would queue up to come and so that started the frenzy. And so they started touring. They toured for two years straight. Boom. 
then you're like yeah today we're going to be announcing some stuff and we're going to give you your first checks so they've been getting you know allowances and stuff like that but they never got paid for the work they've done so they've recorded an album it's sold really well and they've done tours so we're expecting it's the thing about it's like your first paycheck when you're working anywhere yeah if you think, let's say you work out, I'm wearing nine pounds an hour, ten pounds an hour. Yeah. I worked eight hours each week for a month. I'm coming into at least five hundred pounds. Think of that five hundred and then knock off three hundred, and say I'm going to yeah. get two hundred pounds. Yeah. Because if you make two fifty, you'd be pleasantly surprised. I thought it was yeah. going to be two. Yeah, yeah. But when yeah. you think of that five, it's going to embarrass yeah. you. Yeah. Now, it, in fairness to them, though, with what they were seeing, yeah, the amount they were drawing in. Yeah. And the amount their albums were making, it was not bad to anticipate some kind of life changing money. You'd be a millionaire, right? Right. I'm about to start stunting. They come to dinner, oh. opened up their checks, it's $10,000 each. <clears throat> Do you know the maddest thing about that when I first saw You get that more for live at the Apollo, bro. Imagine, imagine that. <clears throat> well, you don't because their fame was ridiculous, which was always going to be a good leverage. But here's the thing. <clears throat> You see, when you said ten, when I said ten thousand dollars, you're thinking, what? Two years of work, the album sales, the touring, and you're giving me ten thousand dollars. Then I remember the new edition story. They got one dollar seventy five cents. No, ten don't seem so bad. <laughs> if you go get scammed, <laughs> get scammed with excellence. <laughs> like, like they got a dollar and seventy five cents each. Six men in a group. The parents were like. <laughs> First of all, why did you even send this? As, as the all, stamp has to be more. Y'all couldn't write it up to two dollars. <laughs> yeah, we just don't got the budget for it, you know. <laughs> Y'all could have an extra, an extra fifteen cents. What? So they got ten thousand dollars, and he said his heart sank. And so they were like, you know, we're gonna file a lawsuit. He was getting paid as a sixth man of each group. So each group had five. He was getting paid as a six man, a six member of the groups. Told the judge that the reason, so they wanted to break from contract. And he said they can't break from contract. They went to the label, said they want to break from contract. The label owner had a mediation with the with Lou and people. And he was like, mm, ultimately Lou, Lou wins because you signed the contract. So we can maybe get another album out of you guys, but pff, other than that, pff. And they were just like, listen, we then they realized we're just cattle. The yeah. label guy was like this, I'm not finna go to court and waste money on trying to, if you don't know, go, if he doesn't, that's your business. You sign the contracts. And here's the thing. They don't write music. They don't record music. They don't produce beats. They sing the vocals. Yeah. They did rehearse. They did dance. They did work their ass off. But... His argument was, I paid for it. I've invested sevens of millions of dollars into your, into this. Yeah. You're not famous because you're talented. You're famous because we spent over seven million dollars getting you out there. Yeah. If I spent seven million dollars on Sunday service, yeah. you're not walking away with ten with um with eight point five million. Why? Yeah. But no one um, and what's it called? One of the Backstreet Boys was like one of the guys from the Temptations. Temptations, you know. Bro. He said he gave him the best advice. <laughs> nah, he told him to step back from the mic one time. <laughs> when a nigga from spin. the Temptations give you advice, you know he telling the truth. <laughs> he said, never forget this is show business. Never forget that you could be doing your business, on, you could be doing your show on stage and your business could be walking out the back door. <laughs> no way. AJ from um, Backstreet Boys told him that. To never forget this is show business. So it's, it's it, the lessons, so many lessons learned here. Um, first of all, everybody that wants to be by the way, so they break contract from Lou Palmer. They break yeah. contract from him. Yeah. And he they he loses out on the next moves. And they, they're going to be even bigger yeah. as a group. But then he says, fuck it, I'll make another band. Right? That's good. Right. So he gets people to do the... Do, 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 do. He's giving them contracts. They take it to their lawyers and they tell them, this is the worst contract you will ever sign. But because they're so desperate to become the next in sync, they sign the contract. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And so... You have to understand as an artist, your art is almost based on your popularity. So if you're coming to the label saying, I want this, this, and this, yeah. all they're looking at is, you don't bring this, this, and this in. How much can I, how easily can I replace you? Basically? I, how easily can I, 
I told you when Maxwell got signed to his label, they shelved his album. Yeah. Say, yeah, no one's gonna listen to this. After we recorded it. Yeah. After you signed me. Yeah. Now there's no space for it. D'Angelo puts his album out, it becomes a big hit. Maxwell! Where you been, baby? Yeah. You know? So they they had to learn that they learned quickly that this was never, you know, they signed a new deal. Um, Lou Palmer eventually got done. He was doing um, a Ponzi scheme where he would get people to invest their savings into his airline and their returns would be this, this and that. But what he was doing was using money from this to, to pay up. Yeah. Right. And so he, people lost their money. He ended up fleeing to the Bahamas or something like that. And the FBI went to try and find him. The FBI was looking for him. He left the country. Because when you're white and you do fraud, they look for you. And um, <laughs> they were trying to find him. Like, you know, he's not been under arrest or charge enough. We just want to talk to him. Because, you know, when you're white... They want to talk to you. Talk to you. <laughs> so he ends up flying to out of the country because he's got a bit of money. Yeah. He's hit the money. And so there was word. They got word from, you know, the snitches. I don't know who their snitches are. That he's in the... But, but, um, Baham, one of these countries. Yeah. Yeah, he's there. And they were like, nah, this is a, you know, we don't even want to send manpower down there. And duh, 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 duh. Yeah. They sent two of the agents down there to just go to the hotel in the morning, ask around the town, show pictures. They said, as they're sitting there eating breakfast, Lou Palmer's right behind them getting breakfast. They still it. They take a picture, send it to the thing. They just arrest him there and then. Bring him back to America. He's in prison now. Mad. Mm-hmm. And he's the one that started the boy bands. Mad. Mm-hmm. The story is incredible. Those guys, though, I think my biggest fascination is with the the guts they must have. Who, the boy band or the guy? People? Lou Palmer. Okay. Because on the one hand, you're a scumbag. Yes, we get that. You know, you're just trying to basically exploit people and put bad deals out there and, you know, scam people, Ponzi schemes, all that kind of stuff. But you got to have some guts to sit there, sit up an airline with no airplanes, to sell people on it, get people to give you money, you keep the Ponzi scheme going as long as you can, s- decide you're in the wrong business, start boy bands, start two boy bands, blow them both up, you pit them against each other to make more money for yourself, and then, like, cut out the country. Like, it's such a far cry from well, most people's like, lives like, that you must, I, I must look at you and go, you must have the same level of focus we were talking about with Messi yeah, and Ronaldo yeah. that nothing else matters to you. No. You have to have a sociopathic level well, of focus. Well, he was that guy. He used to tell Fibs as a kid how we got the airline pictures. He, his friend had an airplane model. No and way. And he, he put his hand at the bottom of it took the picture of it and they just superimposed so it looks like an airplane taking off he also he's actually a, a smart guy because forces usually are very smart yeah he he they were they they love blips fascinated by blips him and his friend they were fascinated by blips and they blips. had this like is it blips or um those things those big air, hot air balloons blimps, blimps. that's okay, it blimps, blimps. Okay, yeah. hot air balloons yeah they were fascinated by hot air balloons and um they were going to start a company together, but then his friend said he kind of swindled him. So he had the idea to use hot air balloons as advertising. Okay. So it's started a company where you could use my hot air balloon to advertise your company. He went to go and rent the cheapest hot air balloon he could find. That he was not great quality. Painted it some disgusting thing. Boom, 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 boom. They told him it's not good quality. He said, don't worry, it's fine. The hair balloon took off and crashed immediately. Destroyed. Bruh. But what they didn't tell anyone was he insured it for $5 million. See, that's what I'm saying. You have to have a certain level of... Well, you have to be white, number one. And number two... <laughs> <laughs> um, So he got oh. an insurance payment of $5 million for the blip. For the, he rented it. For the Is it blip or... Blimp. Blimp. Yeah. He rented it. No, he bought it. He bought it. He bought it, it for $10,000. Bought it for ten five. They told him this is not a good quality. Yeah, give me to ten thousand dollars. He bought it for, and he insured it for five million, <laughs> and then it crashed. Nobody was up there with it. Nope, nobody was, nobody was up because it's a hot air balloon, isn't it? Well, there's hot air balloons where you can get like the little basket. Yeah, it wasn't one of those. Yeah, it's blimp, which it's is blimp, the one. Yeah, blimp, yeah, which is yeah, just goes round. Yeah. So it crashes. 
within like five minutes of takeoff and he claims five million on the insurance which insurance company decides to insure a hot air balloon for five million is beyond me but whatever not so he insured he, he must he, have had an inside man as well i don't know how he did that one but he claims insurance money five million then starts a real company and uses guess guess whose clients become mcdonald's and something else two big um companies so mcdonald's are now with the blimp flying all around and it's catchy they got it red and white da, 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 da. he made money off of that amazing yeah he's just a criminal amazing. mind though he's just a he's a what's it, he's a scam artist but it's one you know but it's one thing to to be a scam artist it's another thing to have the guts to like he still went and actually did the actual business. Yeah. He still went and actually put real blimps in the air and yeah, got clients yeah, at McDonald's. Yeah. Like, that's something, trying to sign a big, like, this is what I do all day, is trying to sign contracts with big companies, with mm-hmm. corporates. Doing B2B sales is not easy at all. Mm-mm. So being a scam artist is one thing, but he's actually... But he was, like I said, he was very smart. Exactly. Incredibly also, intelligent he, and very he, capable. He also, the idea that, and McDonald's were paying, I think, 20 grand a month. For it for for yeah. it for a month to fly around, and can you imagine the kind of Mac? Because people used to look, oh my god, and you see McDonald's on it. Yeah, that's great advertising. Of course, it's fantastic. So it made sense. Yeah, you know, and why no one even thought of it in the beginning? I have no idea. But yeah, Mad. he did that, and that's why when he that's why he could make a boy band. He understood what the I can't remember which band he they told him made so much money. I was like, I'm in the wrong business. And he decided to start a boy band. He actually had talent shows, auditions. You need to look this, 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 and this. Yeah, man. I mean, he got Justin Timberlake, so... He can to be fair, Justin Timberlake was already a star. He was in the Mickey Mouse Club. So yeah. He was, he was the one that was actually a... St- not a star. He was actually one that was already been on television. Yeah. In the Mickey Mouse Club. So he actually didn't get Justin Timberlake. He got one of the boys. And then his friend knew Justin Timberlake. Or he was friends with Justin Timberlake. He said, I want to get my friend Justin to come down. So they auditioned all of them, so they had the right chemistry. They liked them. And they said, yeah, you're going to be in sync. I think one of the guys was like, we're in sync. <laughs> and then yeah, they, they became in sync. But they were struggling at first. They were making the sales. Because Backstreet Boys... <gasps> was killing the game. Yeah. Are you but hella yawning um, today? You're really tired. Who? I said, you're really tired, man. You're really yawning today. I know, right? Um, I sleep late. But yeah, I think it's because um, Backstreet Boys were hot. But Justin Timberlake had the it factor. Yeah. You know? And here's the thing. You know, they were talking about Lou Palmer being shady or whatever, whatever. Justin Timberlake left the group. <laughs> went solo. Yeah. I know they don't make music anymore. I know, right? To be honest, when, when Justin Timberlake came out and did like Rock Your Body and stuff, you look at this guy and you're like, this guy's a flipping star. Come on now. You can just see it. The star quality is there. And the selling quality is there, yeah. You don't why do you make that distinction? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's particularly a great musician. I just think he's, I just think he's selling quality is there. White boy who can sing average R&B. Uh, well, I, I guess that's what I mean by star quality yeah. in the sense that like, I can see this guy. For white star. people, yeah, absolutely. He could, he could, he could, he could dance, period. For a white person, yeah. No, I think he could dance. Yeah, for a white person. Well, yeah. you think the average black person can dance better than Justin Timberlake? Not the average, the basic. The basic the black person, basic black person, yeah, can dance better than Justin. Ten Timberlake. times better. The basic. Wow, that's the some basic. big disrespect. I think his right backing dance was probably better than dancing than him. Interesting. I yeah. thought he was a really good dancer. For a white person, he was. It's like we we always gave white people passes, though. I no, there's some. That... Oh yeah, great because they were, they were white. A black person doing half of that would not get the same response. Because we expect it from you. It's like that's it. Black. You see. Um, Chris Brown has to walk in the air. <laughs> just to get Chris out, Brown is an to exceptional... Get, to get out of our seat. <laughs> no, Chris Brown, Chris Brown is an exceptional Chris an amazing dancer. dancer. yeah. But what I'm saying is that there, there's some white people, when they do something, you're like, all right, that's good for a white person. Like, I, I believe that like Eminem is a great rapper, period. period. I don't believe he's a great rapper for no, a white guy. No, he's a great rapper, period, yeah. Yeah, and so that's why I felt like in the same way... I don't think Justin is a great dancer, period, no. I think he's a great dancer for a white guy. Interesting. I think if a black person did those moves, it would be very, very basic for me. Fair play, yeah, fair play. Right. I mean, it's not, it's not a hill I'm willing to die on. No, I'm, I'm just saying. That's what I'm saying. I can understand yeah. why. Again, he made great music. Music was good. But yeah. you know, we had Timberland in your corner. Yeah, Pharrell. 
Timberland and Pharrell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, woo. you can't really miss with them niggas. You know what I'm saying? saying. <laughs> yeah, the hottest producers <laughs> in the game. Right, man. Yeah. right. You know, Junior Wine was friends with Timberland. He ain't game on him. <laughs> Why you always? Hey, we have to apologize to Junior Wine. Yo, Mr. Elgin <laughs> Lumpkin. We are uh, so you sorry. Know, although I heard that, you know, Junior Wine was impossible to, it was diff- they had a bit of a tip or anything like that. Oh, because he, he had he's to work lie. on the lyrics he's a bit. Lie. He's a lie. <laughs> he was like, I need to tweet these lyrics a bit. The label was like this. We can't afford him and then, bro, not for your album. My goodness. That's a cold game. They they must have thrown money at that Justin Timberlake project. That's why Pharrell and Timberlake were like, yeah, I, I work Are with, you crazy? I, I work with him. Are you, did you not see the sound he had? Yeah, man. Well, you think, um, who else was hot then? Then the black person that was, I don't know. You think Donald Jones could phone Timberlake and say, yo, man, I ain't been around in about two, three years, but I got this little project I'm working on. Ah. Bro, you couldn't get out. Me and my brother were breaking down R. Kelly and yeah. the 90s. Yeah. And how R. Kelly had the 90s in his pocket. R. Kelly is the 90s, really. Yeah, R. Kelly. Like, he sh- they can rename that year the R. Kelly's. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. what song wasn't he involved in and what hit didn't he put out? And we were just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what kind of crack were you on? Hey, he was, was so a hot, yeah. Jay-Z was like, Remember the Fiesta remix? But, but they did a whole tour together, bro. bro. What remix with the homie from the Midwest, a shower. <laughs> it's game recognized game. It's the new two live crew. Jay Z was trying to get on that bag. What do you R. mean? Kelly was the biggest. Yeah. God. R. Kelly had it. R. Kelly was. That's why R. Kelly was getting brazen and doing all sorts of nonsense because yeah, he man. was too big. He was too big, man. How can you do an album called AJ Knight with a, by a number for a girl that you married at fifteen? You in the back of the album co- picture just posing against the wall. That's some bold stuff. Was that good though? Of course it was good. Exactly. So AJ nothing but a number. AJ nothing but a number. Going down. Did you say going down? Ain't nothing but a thing. I think it was getting down. Which is the same. It's, it's right, not really down, ain't not in my thing. You said going down. Ain't nothing but a thing. thing. <laughs> she sang um, At Your Best, which was a an Isley song. That was a decent album. Back oh, and forth was a hit though. Do what you want to do with your personality, Jane and Janity. But not the baddest thing. He married at 15. He was what, 28? No, Sorry. no, no, he wasn't 28. He, wasn't 28. he was old enough to know better. Hold on. 96, how old is he? Because that's when them. Um, hold on. When did, the, when did Back and Forth come out? 94. Let me see you go back and forth. Back, um, back, forth and forth. She shook Nigeria, man. Every year she was 16. <laughs> Every single year. No, she's 16 years old. Oh, that was two years ago, though. Bruh. Doesn't she, does she age? Bruh. But um, the thing is, what I'm what I'm saying is, yeah, it's it's mad now because um, if he had just waited, and like, he, what you say? If he just, uh, that's the whole point. I don't think he wanted to wait. Okay. I don't not? think he wanted to wait because suppose he likes them young. If you like him young, waiting is the antithesis of what you want. No, I, I do. At, at that time, I think the lines were blurred between what was young. And for everybody. Nah, there's no way 15 was cool, bro. Really? I was presently married a 14 year old. I think that's wrong still. Of course it's wrong, but nobody said nothing. At that time, people were marrying young women. And that no, nothing gets nothing gets spoken about. Nothing gets told. Nothing gets. I heard Jay Z ch- was checking for Beyonce when she was underage as well. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I know Diddy took Usher to a OJ at 14. Uh, mm-hmm. that ain't right. Mm-hmm. So, I said, by the way, you're saying that ain't right, that. but at 14, I'm going to do OJ. I don't know what you said. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing OJs before GCSEs, bro? <laughs> Mad. Nah. Nah. What did you get your GCSEs? OGs. I got <laughs> OGs. <laughs> I got OGs, baby. <laughs> That's nuts. For real, literally. That's bro. for real. But yeah, and none of them cats, none of them cats can say they didn't, um, there wasn't a time where at the after party at the hotel, one of them was like, I'm 16. They're like, yo, here's $200. Make sure you don't open your goddamn mouth. That's There's no disgusting. way. Oh my. God. That's left a, I was about to say, it's left a bad taste in my mouth. It's just, everything sounds I disgusting. Think, I, think, um, I think um, at that time, the lines were very blurred. And so, you know, it was just, it's really bad, man. It's really bad. And there is a, an, a, 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 an air of older men and younger women. There is. There is, you know. From time you can sanction the Playboy Mansion. There is. 
Well, yeah, I mean, we've known this for the longest mm. just because, and it, and it makes sense biologically because mm-hmm. men don't have the same, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, cut-off point. In terms when men of, hit 50, they love a 25-year-old. Yeah. They, they don't but ask it, them questions, but here, here's sense the, of the stole. But here's the thing, right? And this is, I, I don't want to start a new podcast yeah. right towards the, the end of the two hours, but it's like, I, I see this discussion. I think there's a healthy part and then there's an unhealthy part right so if a 50 year old and a 30 year old woman or 25, 20, 25 year old woman want to get together i don't really see any problem in it. as long as they're both adults they want to mm-hmm, do what they mm-hmm, want to mm-hmm. do obviously i'm disgusted by like 30 well anyone who's grown being with a 15 year old girl or whatever yeah, or even 16 is just like any teen way of doing it. any teen any teen right any teen <laughs> <laughs> any teen but here's the thing so like every so often you'll see this post on Instagram. A guy will be like, "Look, I I don't really want any girls in their thirties. I want twenties. Like they just still kind of you know they were willing to get on your program. They're still excited about life. Blah blah blah. And then someone in their thirties will be like, "Yeah, you just a borderline pedophile. You just like little girls. You want to control them. You want to manipulate women. And there's an element to which obviously there are disgusting guys out there in the world." But I think the vast majority of young younger women like an older man. They mm-hmm. find him too matured, and mm-hmm. and older men like younger women. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I don't mm-hmm. think it should often mm-hmm. be given. But I, I I feel like it's a shame tactic. Like when you get into your thirties, I know some some people say in general, like I want a girl in her thirties because she's had some life experience, whatever. But it makes sense to try and marry a girl who's in her twenties because, like most of the dating experience people talk about, is just traumas. They just build up a bag of things that they're upset about yeah. emotional baggage yeah. and so on yeah and you're so, dating kids pardon you're dating as kids yeah so i mean but i mean if, if it's a 50 year old let's say let's say he's 40 let's say he's in his 40s he's now made his money because 45 is usually when men reach their financial peak and he <laughs> wants to be rewarded for doing well out here slipping too, dog. pardon 40 niggas are slipping here too dog. <laughs> But if you get to your, your financial peak, you're 45, you're making the best money you've ever made in mm. your life now. Now there's some some nice 25-year-olds, the fresh crop, croppers come in. And you're and you're 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 looking at what you want for yourself. I don't think that makes you a scumbag because you go for that. Personally, that's obviously not my life. I got married at 26 and I married a 25-year-old woman. So our story is different. But when I look at those guys, I'm like, that makes 100% sense for you. Mm. One, you've got the most time left on her biological clock. Two, yes, she hasn't got a series of heartbreaks and so on to bring to you maybe she, she might do but for, for how long really how long can she really rack up if she might be, she, was, though. She might be yeah mm. but the truth is over the next 10 years or so she's gonna have to mature anyway true and she probably women mature quicker than men so this is what i'm saying like no, 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 I, I'm it makes 100%. sense I'm it 100%. makes 100 percent sense i think there's a lot of uh there's a lot of shame in because it's like you know you kind of feel a bit to be scared. Honest with you, when, one thing I've realized is someone who was this someone that said this to me the other day. Nobody's watching you, you know. Bro. People are watching, but it doesn't really matter. They don't matter. No. I was on the thingy one day and I was like, what's me? I don't know anybody on this on this bus. I could do whatever I want. I don't know anyone on this bus. I don't know anyone, I don't know anyone anything. No one's watching you. Yeah. So just live your life. No one's watching you. There's a girl actually I saw who does content like that online. Where she challenges people to do things that they've always wanted to do, but they're scared. So, like, she basically she made this video about her going to the club by herself, and her catchphrase was like, "Nobody cares. Like, no one's watching you. No, no. one cares." By and the she, way, she you has can go to the club by yourself yeah. and actually act like you're there with, with ten men. <laughs> I mean, she goes. She has a fantastic time. She makes new friends and everything. Yeah. It's fantastic. And, and I and I get that, but no one's watching until they are watching. And this is the the thing about the internet. No one's now. watching until you care. Bro, there no are no peop- one's watching until you care. Bro, there are people who are just tweeting stuff on their little twelve followers account on, and do you care? on Twitter, and then it you just br- said it goes- to me, Messi and them not do not care. They're not reading those comments. No one cares. No one's watching until you care. But what I'm saying is that for for Messi and them, it doesn't even really matter because they're doing their job. They're focused on their job, right? But like for that woman who tweeted, "Oh, I'm on my way to South Africa. I hope I don't get AIDS." Right, and she turns, puts her phone on flight mode, lands in South Africa, and like the entire world hates her. Because she's an idiot. She is an idiot. Yes, yeah. but in that, it, what I'm saying is that we're living in a day and age now where, of course, no one cares until everyone decides that they care, and then you literally your whole no life. No one can change cares in an because she, she, no one cares about her. If she didn't put that out, no one would care. If True, she put going to South Africa to enjoy myself, no one would care. But yeah. you said South Africa is going to give you AIDS. 
So you yeah. ask for people to us. You ask for people's opinion. No, you're not. Yes, you are. You put you put it out there so you can get a reaction, and you got it. Why would you post? I'm going to South Africa. Hope I don't get AIDS. What were you hoping to happen? Oh, baby girl, make sure you use two condoms. Oh, I had sex in the village at this point. Ace free zone. What were you hoping AIDS for? Ace free. <laughs> what were you hoping for? You were hoping for abuse. When I say no one's watching you, what I mean is to live your life. So when we say yeah. stuff like, oh. Yeah, but to her, she's cracking a joke, right? Okay, that's right? fine. And she's living her life. Okay, that's and fine. And she might be convinced that no one's watching me. Like, what does it matter? To be honest with you, that's she not didn't... what she was doing. She was being stupid. She was, it's I early days was of Twitter stupid. where it's the same thing where, where someone will say, oh, yes, queen, but you were ripping her lips two years ago. It's the same thing. Do you see what I'm saying? Early days of Twitter, people were reckless. Yes. So you'd say what you want. So yeah. she was following that wave of being reckless. Yeah. You okay. understand? When I say no one's watching you, what I mean is living your life uh, to, to, to not to the standards of people, to care what people say or what people think or how people feel about the decision you make. For instance, if you want to go to a comedy show with green vans on or whatever just do you even if people are talking that's none of your business then it's not your life that's what I mean because a lot we spend a lot of time worrying what other people will say or think but, but, but how, nobody's how, how actually that, watching you how's that different from somebody who wants to crack a joke because they think it's funny and then it turns out that everyone wants to cancel you because of it you lose your because job because you cracked you a everything. stupid joke yeah yeah when, yeah, but my, I, when my I say live your best, I don't, I don't mean, so I should go and say, kill all niggas. So you, um, so you probably should, you, so you probably so should like, be. Me, me live my best, I can I can go on Twitter and say, um, I'm going to, to 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 Africa. I hope the niggas, I'm showered there. Is that is that cool? Is that <laughs> me now being, oh, I was just trying to live my best life. No, you know better than that. She's a grown ass woman. She should know better than that. She should, but yeah. that's, but that, that, that knowing better is knowing. Well, now she does is, know, Is she? knowing what other people think about what you have to say. The joke no, 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 no. You if know that's how it's going to be if taken. If you're a grown ass woman and you don't know that that tweet is going to get you in trouble, then give up. Jump out the plane. Why are you always going to go to Jump extreme, out the plane. Bro? That's provocative. I'm not saying be provocative. I'm not saying you should be provocative and not expect any rebuttals. Okay. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying provoke people. I'm saying live your life. Do what you do. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying that like you describing it as being provocative is, yes, it is provocative, but you can't see that was her intention was to provoke. Maybe she Of course thought, it was. Maybe she just thinks it's funny. Why? Okay, so like if a why would you think that was funny? So if a woman, for example, wears a sexy outfit, mm -hmm. as far as she's concerned in her head, mm -hmm. this is what she wants to wear. Mm -hmm. But to a guy, he's like, "Why are you dressing provocative?" She knows she's sexy as well, though. So you think she is being provocative? She knows she's sexy. I'm yeah. not saying she's being provocative, but she knows she's sexy. Okay. She's not putting up. You're not gonna put on a sexy outfit and be like, "I don't look sexy in this." You're gonna know. I look. You're gonna feel sexy. Yes. You, if you wear a thong, you're gonna feel sexy. <laughs> <laughs> for the way you're saying it's true though <laughs> ask any thong. woman you wear a thong you're like I feel whatever okay you wear big mama drawers you, you're you not gonna be like hey baby come around drag these drawers down no so what I'm saying is if you dress that way it sets a mood if I'm dressed fresh to death mm -hmm. I know I'm gonna try and approach a girl if I look like a bum I don't say you know what I'm living my best life I'm not gonna brush my teeth bad breath hey baby let me talk to you Uh, I don't wanna talk to you what 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 no you didn't brush your teeth bro okay so if a woman for example wants to wear a dress, mm -hmm. but she knows it's going to attract attention, mm -hmm. right? You are saying, your advice is, nobody cares. No. Nobody's watching you. Live your no. life. Yeah. But if she does do it and everybody does care... Who cares? That's her dress. What are they going to say? Take off the dress. Yeah, don't dress like this to this establishment. That's your business. To this establishment. Yeah. What establishment? What establishment? Church, why school, would you dress wherever. Like that to church? Why would you dress like that to church? That's the, that's the just why you would you dress like that to church, though? Why would you dress like that to church? Bro, why would you just say that to if, if you, if you why would you wear um why would you wear booty shorts to a funeral? Why? And say I'm just trying to do my best life. That doesn't make no sense. I'm not saying bro. be stupid in this world. Bro. You, you know, your man wallet. That's what they're saying. You're about your man wallet. You I test the, you check your room. If I'm, at, I won't expect anyone to go to church room. like that. And by the way, I've seen people who come to church looking like that. And it is uncomfortable. No, but I've seen I've seen people come to church in what in most places would be okay, but in the church is a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So the dress is just above the knee or whatever. Uh, it is, one right? girl used to come to church and in a crop top and she had big breasts. And oh the aunt said to call her, my husband is weak. <laughs> 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 the auntie had to call her and say, listen, you can't just like this to church. Wow. And wow. that's that's just a, that's just a, a, a an environment thing. But yeah. what I'm saying is if you're going outside, 
Yeah. And you want to dress the way you want to dress. Yeah. That's up to you. No one's watching. Even if someone says you look a bit slight tonight, your, your mum looks slight tonight. And keep it moving. That's up to you. But when you start, you know, tweeting, oh, I'm going to India. I hope the bud bud ting ting doesn't catch me. That's disrespectful. <laughs> I swear, these examples you give are low-key racist. You can't do that. Of, themselves. of course they are racist. <laughs> but I'm not stupid enough to go on Twitter and be like, oh, imagine me now after all went going to Amsterdam, <laughs> where I love, after Amsterdam, I hope that the drug heads don't, you know? It's like, bro, you, now you're looking for attention. Now you're looking for attention. All right, on that note, man. Um, on that note, be who you are. Don't wear crop chops to church. Yeah. It's like if you're coming, it's, imagine you're charged with Murder, for instance. Yeah. Ugh, these you, you try, examples. You're trying to bust case, but yeah. you come in a, in a band of clover to court. What, what you doing, bro? What you doing, bro? What are you doing right now? Give yourself a chance. <laughs> Have you not seen Snapped Women Who Kill? All these shows that we used to, all these crime shows we watch, yeah. the woman kills the husband. When she shows up in court, bro. you're like, hey, this bitch trying to get off. Bro. Glasses, ponytail, oh, yeah, yeah. pink dress girl, looking yeah. like a teacher. Of course, of course, of course. Because you're trying to sell it. Of course, man, of course. You know? So, yeah, yeah. your man will it, man. Hey, man that's what you should call the person, your man will it. I mean. No? Okay, let me give you the two-pack quote to call the podcast. Only God can judge me. No real reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where did this come from? Ah! Did we actually even have a final... That's the only God Can Judge Me is a two-pack song. You know that I know song. it is, but didn't we have... Okay, you, you told me the one from Smile, which we already had, yeah. and then you told me another one. I don't even remember that. I need to go back and listen to this. Did, did, did I tell you? Put um, If My Home Is Cool. Bro, did all of these man? Have you heard sometimes? If My Home Is Cool, though? I haven't listened to that. Oh, she heard man. It's old school pack, man. So then once we were like, right, he was a human before. You know? There's no, you know, violence in there, you know, trying to help you out. There's a bit, in the video, they're sitting on the corner as kids, shooting dice, and there's like baby milk there. And then they, they turn around and they show them all old in the same corner. But now they got 40s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, I always wanted to drink a 40 ounce here. Yeah, then I realized I would never like it. It's, not, it's obviously not going to be nice, bro. No, it's not going to be nice. It's not going to be nice. It's just it's for the hood. All right. 40 ounce of malt liquor make me want to talk. Ounce. Malt liquor. Guys, um, find Fumbi at Fumbi on Mateo yeah. on, the, on Instagram and at Fumbi on Twitter. I am at Ola the Comedian on a thing. That's on Neighborhood. Did you say it today? It's on Crip. That's on Family. That's on a thing. That's on a thing. All right, man. Shout out to the BQ squad. Much love. The BQ oh, squad. Yeah. Oh, it's, I was like, why are you trying to be in Q, bro? <laughs> Shout out to the BQ squad listening to the BQ pod. We out. <laughs>